Welcome to the Third House Podcast. I'm Erica, your host, and together we'll unravel the astrological and psychological tapestry that shapes our lives. Join me as we navigate the threads that connect our charts to our emotions, relationships, and inner selves. Get ready for illuminating conversations and insights because self discovery has no bounds. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome. Welcome back. But if you are new here, of course, please feel free to subscribe so you stay up to date with all of this content. It's been a little bit since I've recorded. Um, I am already, (laughs) I feel like I'm already feeling the eclipse season that's about to unfold as I um, record this. So I really wanted to set aside and dedicate some time to really get this out as early as I possibly could with everything that's sort of unfolding in my life right now. Um, If you want to skip the intro, I'm going to do a little intro where I want to talk about more contextual clues, kind of set the stage a little bit. Maybe for some of you, it would be a good time to kind of pull up your chart, look at your personal placements, so that you get additional information in the intro that might give you more depth or understanding and also reflection points to think back on that are sort of culminating or playing out currently. But... There will be timestamps. If you're listening on Spotify, the timestamps will be in the description below and you can simply fast forward to your rising sign. Or if you're listening on YouTube, you, there should be a link in, in the description. You just click on the, the timestamp for your rising sign. Um, if you want to skip the intro and just get to the meat and potatoes of the horoscope, please do that now. I won't be offended. And as always, you can come back. You can re-listen. Because April April's a very interesting month where some things have already happened and played out and, you know, the story kind of continues and shifts things in our lives. So please do that. Please skip. But if you want to stay for this intro where, you know, I'm going to discuss more information for you to think about and apply to your own chart, um, that will put the monthly horoscope into better perspective. Um, Yeah, we'll just jump right in. So March 25th, again, if you're listening to this early, uh, March 25th, the full moon lunar eclipse will be gearing up to happen in Libra, or if you're listening to this later than that, it will have happened in Libra. Now, this full moon lunar eclipse will be at five degrees Libra and the new moon solar eclipse in Aries at 19 degrees will happen this month on April 8th. So pause for a second and see if you have any placements, not not just in Libra or Aries, but really any placements at five degrees or 20 degrees in your chart. Those will likely be playing a part in this. Now, if you have placements at five degrees Libra, give or take a few degrees, or 20 degrees of Aries, give or take a couple degrees, Those will definitely, definitely be um, integrated and basically infused with the eclipses. So I think these eclipses are interesting, especially compared to the last couple years. The last couple years, the eclipses, in my opinion, some of them were very, very, very intense. But 
I think these eclipses, they have, there's situations playing out that I'll get into that I think more positive changes will be happening. There's more sort of a benefic influence going on in the background that yes, maybe some changes will happen or some new beginnings will happen, but there's a silver lining or there's a, a really positive change or something that really pushes you in in a, a better or more right direction, whatever it may be. And I think there's going to be potentially more opportunity around this time where we can start to make positive changes or start something new to ultimately create more strength and stability in these areas. Now, in these areas, focus on Libra, Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn. Now, these are the cardinal signs. The eclipses are happening in Libra and Aries and thus cardinal signs. But really, Cancer and Capricorn square these signs. Um, And so they're also part of the story. So Libra, Aries, Cancer, Capricorn. What's going on? What are the cardinal signs? Cardinal signs like to start. They like to ignite. They like to start something. And eclipses like to close things out or change things or cause new beginnings. So I think where we're we're going from fixed eclipses the last couple years where fixed doesn't always like to change or bend they'd rather break because that's the beauty of fixed they commit they hold you know the the strength is there to but sometimes it's not always for the better but cardinal likes to start new and so i think this could be collectively us moving into a new chapter where we're able to create new positive changes. Now, lunar eclipses are typically known as culminations, fruitions, and completions, but I like to think of them as really good reflection points. Reflecting on what has played out the past six-ish months, more importantly, that got you to where you are today. So think, what what has happened over the past six months, internally or externally, that left you feeling like, oh, that led me to this, and here I am today. And so think back to around the end of October 2023. And the reason why I say that is because in October 2023, we had the eclipses shifting out of fixed signs like they were in Taurus and Scorpio and moving into the Aries Libra axis. But more importantly, there was that eclipse at five degrees, just like we're having this time around at five degrees. And so That's why I think it's a good time to think back over the past six months. What has unfolded? What work have you done internally or externally that has led you to these unfoldings that are occurring recently or right now? And what was going on with that last full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus in October 2023? What was happening around that time? where we were really closing out that Taurus-Scorpio axis. And like I said, that eclipse was also at five degrees, like this one we're having in Libra. And what's really, really interesting to me is both Libra and Taurus, they're both ruled by Venus. So there is some, I don't want to say pairing, but what was going on back in October 2023 to now because they have the same ruler there's some uh, commonality going on you know however the eclipse in October 2023 in Taurus 
was with Venus in Virgo. So like I said, the eclipse in October and the eclipse happening now in Libra, March 25th, they both are ruled by Venus. The one in October 2023, Venus was in her fall. So not all that well resourced. But this time, Venus will be in Pisces, where Venus is exalted and in a very different situation from the last eclipse in October 23. Venus, an exalted Venus, is very well resourced. Um, I like to give my clients the analogy. Venus and fall is sort of like... You know, if Venus is like love and, and beauty and, and, you know, manifestation and like Aphrodite, uh, Venus in, in her fall is sort of at like not able to operate in that. It has to, has to really find alternative ways to cope and to work with how Venus would rather operate. But Venus in Pisces is, you know, at the Ritz-Carlton. Having, you know, room service and massages. I mean, again, there are some cons to exaltation that I think people would rather ignore. Um, But I think just like if you were at a hotel... You're under the hotel's rules, but you're very well resourced. Everything's taken care of for you. And Venus sort of expects that. Now, that's why I, in particular, I really like these eclipses in reference to that. The last eclipse ruled by Venus, Venus was not well resourced. Now, she's very well resourced. And so, that tells me collectively, yes, there, there might be changes or there might be thing, decisions made, or, but you're going to have help. And so that's why I really wanted to emphasize the intro for those of you who really want to look at the chart and really contemplate what does Pisces rule in your chart? What does Pisces rule? That might be the area where you will get a lot of help or you will get the resources despite Saturn being there, despite Mars being there. There's help. And let's see. I'm just looking and contemplating here. Oh, yes. The other point I wanted to make was Venus and Jupiter. So we have Venus exalted in Pisces, very well resourced, and Venus is a benefic. Jupiter in Taurus, now Taurus is ruled by Venus. Jupiter is the other benefic. But Jupiter rules over Pisces. So when two planets are in the other planet's home, sort of like some of you, uh, particularly millennials, maybe um, Gen Xers, <laughs> you might remember that show Wife Swap, where it was like totally different homes and then the wives swapped homes and had to live the other wives, you know, life or whatever. And it was really entertaining to watch. Um, And they learned a lot of of lessons. But, you know, the show Wife Swap, that's the the analogy I get. But that's not what we call mutual reception. So Venus is in Jupiter's home. Jupiter's in Venus's home. And they're sextile each other. Sextile is a positive aspect. However... There is a slight detail with sextiles that I don't think a lot of astrologers talk about, and that is sextiles are positive. However, you have to take the opportunity. 
So the opportunity is there, but you have to take it. Compared to other positive aspects in astrology, it sort of naturally happens. Like trines, there there's usually more of like a natural energy flow where it's it's almost like you could take it for granted because it just kind of flows. It just kind of happens. Sextiles are positive, but you have to you have to the opportunity's there, but you gotta you gotta pick it up. You gotta take it. And so with these two benefics sextile each other in mutual reception. Now Jupiter's okay. Jupiter and Taurus is um, definitely focused on um, the material, tangible aspects of life. And Jupiter and Taurus is looking for the faith and the higher purpose in life through the tangible, through the physical, through the material possession. Venus in Pisces is exalted. So Venus actually has a little bit more resources than Jupiter. So if you think of these like two people, right, they're two, you know, great, powerful, positive people. Um, One is a little bit more resource than the other. And so Jupiter and Taurus is probably going to benefit more pertaining to the opportunity. So if you think of what does Pisces rule in your chart? And what does Taurus rule in your chart? The eighth house will, I mean, sorry, not the eighth house. I'm thinking of my own chart. Sorry. (laughs) Pisces is the area ruled by Pisces in your chart is likely going to have a little bit more help or a little bit more resources during these beginnings and endings and changes and, you know, new, new starts with these eclipses. And... Taurus is the area of Taurus in your chart is likely going to have a little bit more, a little bit more benefit, a little bit more help. So that's just something to contemplate before listening to your horoscope. You know, what, what are you already feeling? What are you already seeing come up in terms of themes particularly I mean more very specifically you know the Libra Aries axis but really I think all cardinal signs are going to be affected so what does cancer rule what does Aries rule what does Libra rule um oh my god I'm having a brain fart in live time right now um what does Capricorn rule sorry and where, where are the changes going to happen there? You know, I'm certainly already seeing it. So think about what's coming up. Think about where, more importantly, especially with a sextile placement, where are the opportunities, the resources, and the help between Taurus and Pisces in your chart that you can already start contemplating so that you take the opportunity, you take the resource, you take the help. Because I think that's going to be key in really getting the most out of these cardinal new beginnings. Now, when we get to April 8th, the new moon solar eclipse in Aries, this is going to be really interesting because the ruler of this eclipse, Mars, will now be in Pisces. And Venus will have moved out of Pisces and entered Aries. So by the time we get to April 8th, the energy is going to be very different. And that's why I wanted to do this horoscope a little differently where I discuss the intro kind of get your wheels turning where are your opportunities where are your resources where do you want to start or initiate change create new new stories and new beginnings after things maybe closing out or you know saying this no longer serves me anymore because by the time we get to April 8th those those planets are going to be in entirely different signs And in a very different mindset. So, like I said, the energy is going to be very different from that full moon eclipse in Libra, 
March 25th. So really, I think we're going to feel a major shift within a week or two. Um, and I think this solar eclipse new beginning in Aries will take will take place and Venus in Aries is actually going to help. So at first glance, when you see Venus in Aries, you think, oh, Venus is in detriment. And detriment, you know, these ancient, ancient astrologers used really intense words that one could assume the absolute worst or uh, the prophecies of doom. Detriment is not always a bad thing. I want to assure you of that. A lot of famous people have planets in detriment. Um, Planets in detriment just operate differently. They sometimes... They sometimes overexert. And that's not always a bad thing because there could be a lot of talent with that. So like I say, Marilyn Monroe had Venus and Aries, Venus and detriment. And she was one of the most beautiful, iconic women. I mean, still is, lives on. Um, and you could see how she, I don't want to say overdid it, but it was such an area of beauty and sensuality and it was such a it, it's like it's all she thought about maybe you know like love and relationships and her affair like it was but it made her iconic you know so it's not a bad thing it's just where you're meant that that's an area of of where you're meant to exert yourself. And so when we get to this April 8th new moon solar eclipse in Aries, again, around 20 degrees, give or take a couple degrees. So again, look at your chart. Do you have anything around 20 degrees, particularly of cardinal signs? So Libra, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries. This new moon solar eclipse is like a new beginning on steroids. It's a new change. And and like I said, this is kind of welcomed energy because Aries in particular really likes to trailblaze, really likes to, you know, get an idea and go after it and and you know, start that new chapter and, and initiation and you know, I in particular like this. Now, some people, some astrologers are going to look at this and go, oh, you know, Venus is in Aries when this new moon solar eclipse is happening in Aries. Venus is not well resourced. Venus is in her detriment. I disagree. I disagree because I think if you look at the whole picture of the full moon eclipse in Libra really tying in what maybe started or started playing out back in October 2023, okay? And how the two benefics are a mutual reception and one of them is exalted, really well-resourced. I think that's helping us close out what we need to close out or have an aha moment or have a full understanding understanding where our opportunities are, our resources are. It's ge- like, to me, I feel like it's gearing us up to start something new, create a new chapter. Cardinal signs love new chapters, love to start new things. And we get this new moon solar eclipse a week or two later. And yeah, Venus is in detriment, but I like Venus and Aries for this new moon solar eclipse in Aries because Venus and Aries wants what she wants and she's going to get it. And I can't think of a better, more Aries-like, 
powerful way to have that feeling or have that type of energy when you're starting something new around a new moon solar eclipse. It's a new beginning on steroids. It's a really strong new initiation. And so I think Venus in Aries is going to help us go after it. It's going to help us say, I want what I want and I'm I'm going to go after it. I'm going to get, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit around and expect it to happen. I'm going to, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to go after it. I'm not going to sit in my chase lounge and woe is me. You know, my, my desire will, you know, come to me, right? And Venus, Venus and other signs like in rulership or exaltation, I think has a more, um, law of attraction kind of energy where it's like I sit back and I receive which is good you know we we also need to operate that but I think when we're initiating a new beginning or a change and we really need that oomph we really need that that judge to like get us up and go after it I think that this is really going to help so look at those four cardinal signs you know start contemplating what has happened since October the four areas of the chart ruled by the cardinal signs, Cancer, Capricorn, Aries, Libra, what new beginnings, what new new things do you want to initiate in those areas given the fallout and the changes that have occurred since October, really the end of October 2023? where now you have a totally new perspective. So I think I think we're really going to in the end in April have a totally different energy, a totally different perspective. And I think a lot of us collectively are going to be going after new things. And the rulers of these eclipses in particular are very interesting. Um, Where I think we're going to have a lot of help. And I think there's going to be positive outcomes. And wherever we need strength, wherever there is not, you know, areas where we need more stability, I think there's going to be resources and there's going to be help and there's going to be changes that occur that are going to help us gain more strength, more stability, especially after those fixed signs that are so foundational and so, um, you know, stay the course and um, took some heavy hits the past couple years. And I think we're, we're shifting into entirely new energy where we can, we can start new. We can, we can change to create systems or chapters or areas of life where we can gain more strength and stability um, for the long term. Now, the ruler of the new moon solar eclipse, Mars, I mentioned Venus in detriment, The ruler of this new moon solar eclipse, Mars, will be in Pisces. So Venus and Mars kind of are in swapping places. Um, So Venus in detriment, helping us go after what we want. I want what I want, and I'm going to go after it. Well, the ruler of the eclipse, Mars, in Pisces, with Saturn as well, is going to be interesting because although we want what we want and we're going to go after it, I think a lot of us are going to be taking action to achieve what we want out of this new beginning in an entirely new way. Mars and Pisces takes action 
in a very different way. I mean, Mars is like hot and dry and it's ruled by Aries and Scorpio. So, you know, Scorpio, I'm going to take action. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find a way. Mars and Aries, I'm, I'm gung ho. I'm going to fiz- I'm going to get up. I'm, I'm, I'm the warrior. I'm going to trailblaze. I'm going to make it happen. Okay. Mars in a water sign like Pisces, Mars isn't going to take action the way Mars typically does. So again, if you think of these planets as people, it kind of helps. You know, it's sort of like if Mars could, it, instead of Mars running on land, Mars is running in water. And so Mars is going to find different ways to get what, you know, take action. So Venus is getting us to go after it, despite all odds, and make it happen. But Mars is going to take maybe a different approach. So maybe instead of swimming against the current, Mars might float to shore or let the waves take it in. And I say that with Mars and Pisces. Don't go after what you want. Take the necessary change. And like I said, I think there's going to be positive. I think this is going to be have a lot of positive outcomes for a lot of us. Now, it depends on your personal placements. Um, but I wanted to really make the point of in the grand scheme of things how we take action going after what we want it's a good reminder to stop banging your head against the wall you may want to take action in the most familiar way possible but this is a good time to take a step back and say what can I learn about different approaches how can you not swim against the current and let the waves take you in? Or I'm having the memory of um, my mom was like an avid swimmer growing up and she taught us to swim from a very young age. And she also taught us like safety protocols. So if we're stuck in the ocean, I learned from a very young age, never ever swim directly to shore you swim diagonal and the waves and the current will kind of slowly take you in and you won't wear yourself out and you'll sort of ease your way to the shoreline, ease your way to safety. So with the planet shifting into different signs where they don't normally operate the way that they do, Just keep that in mind. There are, where there's change, especially with the cardinal, you also might have to change the way you take action, the way you achieve. So maybe some of you are having this with health problems or you're especially have noticed a lot of people having more joint ligament um, or just like health stuff in general come up with these transits um, more than more than most, more than average, I'd say, um, you know, there, you, you can still achieve the health results. You can still achieve physical fitness. There's just a different way to do it now where it's not at the detriment of, you know, other parts of you. So just keep that in mind. You don't have to swim against the current and fight, fight, fight. You can find different ways to achieve what you want with this new beginning in April. So with that being said, I hope that, you know, that got your wheels turning. You're sort of, you know, marinating in that, looking at your own chart What do those areas, those cardinal areas, rule in your chart? 
what has already unfolded throughout March. I mean, I'm recording this on March 12th, and I can assure you, I am so feeling the eclipses. Um, I've experienced some pretty intense things in the past week um, where my emotional resilience was tested. And I can, I have the beauty of looking at the chart and looking at the transits and seeing that it will pass. And, you know, I have my resources, I have my opportunities, and I have to remind myself to take them and that these things happen to initiate change and to start new things. So I just wanted to share that. And I wanted to share my gratitude to all of you being here and my business and my channel growing because no matter what happens in my life, I've had a very challenging couple of years and I just wanted to share my gratitude to all of you being here and listening because um, it's been the one love and the one constant in my life and, you know, helping you and and having sessions with all of you listening or contemplating and, you know, meeting so many new new souls and new charts. Um, It's been, it's been an incredible blessing in my life. And so, Going into this eclipse season, I am ready to initiate new change and to start new areas of life with more strength and more stability and more vision. And so I am eager to continue providing content and connecting with all of you and with that being said if you really want to have a one-on-one consultation with me where we really dive into your chart and we look at sort of we really zoom out see the whole story and zoom in to you know the days the weeks the days all of that um, to gain a better perspective on what's influencing you know where where there's the opportunity where to slow down and see sort of what's playing out and what to do and and you know I I certainly know like the the past couple weeks have been really um, challenging but looking at my chart I could definitely see ah this is this is a season of emotional resilience for me right now in ways that I haven't experienced the past couple years and so um, it, it really is a beautiful objective tool. And, um, if it resonates with you, if I resonate with you, um, you know, as always, I will be a resource for you. So the link is in the description below where you can visit my website. You can book any time, any place, at your convenience. So check that out if that is, you know, if you're interested in that. Um, and let's get into those horoscopes. Let's, let's get into April, shall we? Hello, my Aries risings. Okay, so we literally start the month on April 1st when Mercury goes retrograde at 27 degrees. Now, what's interesting about this is when Mercury goes retrograde, Venus will go conjunct Neptune in your Pisces 12th house of subconscious, dreams. Uh, Basically, what I see with this is you might be starting off the month where a part of you is going to be reviewing and revising your health 
your daily work, your daily routines, um, your immediate environment, you know, communication, run, you know, like immediate environment, you know, your, your nine to five, your work schedule, your, your health situation, um, you know, and it, it, when I say health situation, I don't mean like negative. It doesn't always have to be negative. Um, it could quite literally be like, is this workout routine or this wellness lifestyle suitable for me? Or what can I change to enhance my health even more? Um, so I think some of you are going to be going into April. Think part of you thinking about your health, your routines, what you want to do. But that Venus, that Venus Neptune conjunction in your 12th house, I think subconsciously or um, mentally, you might be feeling like you kind of want to escape. Um, now, that Mercury retrograde in your Aries first house of the body will semi-sextile. So semi-sextiles are a minor aspect, but they can tell us a little bit more detail about what's going on. So Mercury retrograde, again, reviewing, revising the health, the work, the routines, the daily environment, the communication, maybe um, catching up with siblings or extended family, that area sort of, or that rulership, semi-sextile, Venus conjunct Neptune in that 12th house of the subconscious, maybe wanting to escape. So the semi-sextile is kind of like, it's kind of like two roommates that comfortably coexist, but they don't have much in common. So like one of them is living, you know, doing their thing, living their life. And the other one's doing their thing and living their life. But each of their lives don't really cross over all that much. But they kind of, you know, they live together. They enjoy it. They coexist. But yeah, they don't really overlap too much. So that tells me that um, a lot of us or you in particular pertaining to your specific chart like a part of you is going to be working with the mercury, you know, wanting to think about your health, your routines, how to sort of implement, review, revise that so that, you know, you can enhance those areas. But then the other part of you is going to be like, oh man, I really, really want a cocktail or I really, you know, don't want to be at work or um, you might feel sort of pulled in two areas, but it won't, it might not feel overwhelming. Like it will be kind of like, okay, part of me feels this way and I can do that there. Um, or if I take care of my health, my work, my routines, my daily environment, you know, now I can, you know, escape at night or have a cocktail or play video games or, you know, go do something totally outside of my norm to escape it. Um, now on April 5th, Venus will enter your first house of self body appearance. Um, so again, I think this is going to maybe help a lot of you go after the things that you want in terms of like your body, your appearance, your identity, how you want to show up in the world. I think you're going to be a little bit more gung ho. I want what I want and go after it. Venus rules your seventh house of marriage and partnerships, and it also rules your second house of earned income and self-worth. So a lot of you might be trying to work with your body, work with your appearance, identity, how you show up in the world. Um, because Venus rules the second and the seventh, you might you know, be looking into your resources that can help you achieve that. Or you might be looking into, you know, any close partnerships in your life that can help you sort of achieve that. On the same day, the North Node, again, in your first house of self, body, identity, will go conjunct the Sun in Aries. Now, the Sun is exalted in Aries, so this is a good thing. This is a very well-resourced Sun. And the Sun rules your fifth house of fun, creativity, pleasure, um, you know, romance, dating. So I think you're going to be going into April trying to initiate, you know, taking care of your body, you know, focusing more on your appearance, focusing more on your identity, how you want to show up in the world, sort of reviewing and revising your health, your routines, your environment in order to achieve that. 
and looking at what your resources are, what partnerships in your, are in your life that can additional, be additional resources to help you achieve that. And then that sun going conjunct that north node, you know, to me, generally speaking, this looks like you're going to want to increase more fun, increase more pleasure. I think a lot of you going into April are going to be feeling, you know, more maybe ready to put yourself out there or um, ready to incorporate more fun and enjoyable parts of life. Now on April 8th, we have that new moon solar eclipse in Aries. Again, your first house, self, body, lots of self, body, identity showing up in the world right now. Um, but April 8th, that new moon solar eclipse in Aries at 19 degrees will be conjunct Chiron. So there will be this new new beginning, new, um, again, I think a lot of you are going to be focusing on your body, your appearance, your identity, maybe your health your environment, your resources in order to achieve that while simultaneously trying to move towards incorporating more pleasure and more fun in your life, more romance, more more dating, especially if you're single. This could be a really important time. And then that new moon solar eclipse in Aries happens on April 8th where it's really a new beginning and a, a new beginning on steroids. So what do you really want to initiate? What do you really want to change involving the body? the appearance, the identity, and how you show up in the world. Now it's conjunct Chiron. So it's like, where can you, Chiron gets a bad reputation, but it's like, where can you seek more healing? Where can you, you know, where can you heal your body in order to help cultivate that change or initiate that change? Now on April 10th, a few days later, we have Mars conjunct Saturn in your Pisces 12th house. Mars rules you, your body, yourself, also rules your eighth house of sex, death, transformation, um, your partner's money, assets, investments, really like other people's resources or other types of resources than, you know, your paycheck or your income. Um, And, you know, Saturn rules your career and your friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So all of these areas sort of coming together in this conjunction in your 12th house of the subconscious is sort of like, you know, as these new beginnings are initiated around you, your body, all of this, you know, focus on you, really, this Mars conjunct Saturn in Pisces is interesting in the 12th because it tells me that there's going to be sort of like a, a deeper subconscious shift, um, a mental shift. So you focusing on the body, the appearance, the identity, maybe your health, your resources, all that stuff is going to have you have a deeper effect, a more subconscious effect maybe on the way you perceive yourself or the way you perceive things. And it could affect the way you perceive your your long-term investments or your resources or how you want to transform yourself could have a long-term effect on your long-term goals, your career goals, etc. Now, April 11th, there will be the Mercury Cassini in your Aries first house of self body with the moon just entering Gemini. Now, I'm not, I don't, always do moon transits. I mean, the moon moves very, very quickly. But if if I see kind of a, you know, an indicator or um, something significant that could play into it, I I will mention it in this case. Um, Mercury Cassini is like that, that aha moment that, you know, Mercury's no longer combust or under the rays. Um, Mercury's in the heart of the sun. Mercury is sort of revived. And it's in that first house. Again, so much body and self stuff going on for you guys. And Mercury rules over Gemini where the moon will be. And the moon in many aspects in astrology rules over the body, the emotional body. And so I think there will be maybe more of an aha moment or a breakthrough with what you've been working on pertaining to yourself your body, 
your identity, how you show up in the world. And the moon entering Gemini is sort of like, you know, Gemini rules your third house of communication, your daily environment. But the moon going into Gemini, I always notice when the moon goes into Gemini, people get a little bit more chatty, get a little bit more intellectual. Um, We want to talk more. We want to connect more. So I think some of you might be connecting more with your extended family, uh, communicating more with your siblings, sort of getting out and about um, in your immediate environment and connecting to people within that environment um, as you sort of maybe have this aha moment or this breakthrough pertaining to you and how you want to show up in the world and your body. Now, April 17th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. Now, this this conjunction will be exact on April 20th, but you will feel it most likely April 17th in your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So Jupiter rules your ninth house of higher education, your wisdom, um, travel, really knowledge, what you know to be true, your spirituality, your religion. And Uranus, you know, is an outer planet. I'm more, I try to focus more on the traditional planets, but um, I will combine modern astrology. Um, Uranus ruling your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Um, You know, these two coming together in your second house of earned income, material possessions and self-worth, you know, you have basically expect the unexpected, um, really like sudden events, like unconventional rebellion combined with good luck, good fortune, abundance. So whatever Jupiter touches, Jupiter wants to expand. And so these two planets coming together in your second house of earned income, material possessions or self-worth could signify a point in time where you feel a little bit more abundant, you feel a little bit more expansive around your self-worth or your material possessions or your ability to increase, you know, your income. But most importantly, with what Jupiter rules in your chart, you know, your 12th house of subconscious, your ninth house of higher education, beliefs, religion, spirituality, um, you might be feeling like you can combine the spiritual with the physical with, you know, your, your material possessions, your self-worth, etc. So I kind of like this, especially after all that body stuff going on. Um, and again, on April 17th, Venus will be conjunct that North node in your first house of self, body, appearance, identity, and Venus rules over, Venus is sort of the landlord of that Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So there's definitely going to be something going on with you, your appearance, your body, your self-worth, how you show up in the world, and your ability to expand um, your self-worth, expand your material possessions, um, and even your your earned income. And, you know, the south node in your seventh, like where are your resources and, you know, The south node can be a release, but some of you might be releasing things of like not necessarily releasing a relationship or a partnership, but maybe this new body, this new identity, this ability to focus more on yourself um, allows you to show up in different ways in a relationship that you couldn't prior, if that makes sense. So, you know, think about how it's going to affect you being able to focus on your body and your health and, you know, your ability to sort of like this month for you, I see um, your, your health is in your wealth or your wealth is in your health. You know what I mean? Like if you're, if you're healthy and you feel good in your body and you can really show up, then you can show up more to increase more and create more wealth in your life. And I see a lot of you taking or initiating that new chapter in April. And on April 30th, we really end the month with 
Mars entering its home sign of Aries, your first house, and Venus finally entering its own sign of Taurus. So we are really ending the month, in my opinion, where what we love and value and how we take action will become more familiar to us. You know, you have two planets in their in their rulership in their own home. Um, they ultimately are a little bit more well resourced and have the ability to do what they need to do more readily, the way they would prefer to do it. Um, and so I like how we sort of go through this eclipse season and we get you know new perspectives and and different ways of doing things. And then we're sort of ending the month with okay, now we can implement them. Now we can sort of settle in in a in a more natural organic way hello Taurus risings now on April 1st Mercury will go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries this is going to happen in your 12th house of subconscious dreams sort of what's going on beneath the surface maybe where you limit yourself or where you self-sabotage yourself now, ultimately, Mercury rules over your fifth house of creativity, pleasure, self-expression, really the fun house, romance, dating, all of that. It also rules over your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So I think a lot of you are going to go into April really starting to review and revise maybe your approach to fun you know, um, what you consider fun, what you no longer consider fun, um, you know, where your resources are at, you know, your income, where you can maybe, I think a lot of you are going to be deeply contemplating, um, you know, how your mental body influences your perception of fun and pleasure in life and also your material possessions your income your self-worth and maybe reviewing and revising sort of the mental component of it is going to have you start an entirely new journey on your approach to making money self-worth incorporating more fun um, and enjoyment in your life. Now, what's interesting on this April 1st day, Venus will go conjunct Neptune in Pisces at 27 degrees. So this is this conjunction's happening in your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Now, this Mercury retrograde will semi-sextile this Venus conjunct Neptune in your 11th house. So I know that's a lot of words for some of you. I will break it down. Semi-sextiles are a minor aspect, but if I see something, I can pull up the minor aspects to gain a little bit more detail as to what this Mercury retrograde is going to initiate for a lot of us. So the semi-sextile is like two roommates that comfortably coexist but don't have much in common they kind of have very different lives but you know they comfortably live together and you know it is what it is so it kind of signifies a part of us is going to be working with something and then another part of us is going to be working with something totally different so that tells me as a professional astrologer when I'm looking at a chart okay a lot of times there's overlap in areas or themes in life or there's connection but the semi-sextile can tell me that you're probably going to go into April heavily focused in two different areas that really don't have much in common and the problem that I see with this or not a problem is there's going to be you know I think a part of you heavily focused on like mentally thinking, contemplating, you know, your approach to money, your approach to fun and pleasure in life, what, you know, what's going on with that, maybe approach to dating or romance as well, if you're single, 
Um, and then another part of you, maybe with the Venus Neptune conjunction in your in your eleventh, is maybe a part of you is going to be really wanting to escape your long term goals or escape by you know surrounding yourself with your friends groups and communities so how I see this is like part of you is going to want to escape when you surround yourself with people friends groups communities it's easier to not think about what you need to think about or focus on the things that you need to focus on and for you those are internal experiences so I'd say going into April Make sure you are having enough time, enough solitude to, you know, deal with the mental, your mental body and enough solitude to think about your resources and, you know, your approach to fun and what do you, what is, especially in the past couple of years with those eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio, um, how has your idea of fun and pleasure changed? And, you know, what can you change internally to align yourself to what you really enjoy? How can you maybe look at your income and your material possessions as a way to carve out maybe a resource or income in order to put towards what you really want to have fun with or how you really want to spend your time. And then, you know, once you have time to kind of, you know, as you're sorting that out, then go escape with friends or escape, you know, with your groups and communities and such. Now on April 5th, Venus will enter your Aries 12th house of the subconscious. So your mind, you know, Venus in Aries is a very different Venus. Um, So I think this is going to change things mentally for a lot of you where your mind might, you might be thinking differently. You might be getting different perspectives um, with that Venus in your Aries 12th. Now what's interesting is on the same day, April 5th, that North Node will be conjunct the sun in your Aries 12th of subconscious. So this is really going to increase the subconscious area, but the sun, the sun rules your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. So you also have something going on where you might be, you might be heavily, heavily focused, like mentally focused on your home environment a family environment, um, real estate, property situation playing out in a very strong way because, again, that sun is exalted in that Aries 12th house of the subconscious. So very, very, very interesting for Taurus risings. Let me know in the comments if you're a Taurus rising, you know, how that's kind of coming up for you because the 12th house is an interesting house. On April 8th, we will then have the new moon solar eclipse in Aries at 19 degrees conjunct Chiron. So April 8th comes around and there's this new beginning, really strong new beginning um, in that 12th house of subconscious. So it looks like there's a lot of mental, you know, thoughts going on and, you know, with that Mercury, um, how you have fun, you know, money situation, home, family, property, real estate situation, kind of playing out, um, you know, in a really, really strong way. And then April 8th comes around and it's sort of like this new chapter, this new beginning starts in, in the subconscious, in the mental, um, in the visions, in the dream area of your chart. And the conjunction with Chiron is interesting because it's sort of like an opportunity to heal. Like, what can you heal in those areas um, to create that change 
to initiate that change with more strength and stability. So this is very, this is peculiar to me. Um, so again, let me know in the comments, you know, what, what comes up for some of you. And then a few days later on April 10th, Mars goes conjunct Saturn in Pisces. So this is your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Mars rules that seventh house of marriage, partnership, business partnership, your 12th house of subconscious, Saturn rules ninth house of beliefs, higher education, spirituality, religion, and rules your 10th house of career as well. So all of these areas sort of coming together and integrated within your friends, groups, and communities and long-term goals is very interesting. So whatever's happening to you mentally I think is going to drastically shift your approach to not only fun and in, in your resources, but also your approach to, you know, your your beliefs, your knowledge, your approach to your career. How has it how has it and how is it affecting your perspective on a marriage, on a partnership or a business partnership? Then on April eleventh, there's the Mercury Cassini in Aries. So this is sort of that aha moment with the Mercury retrograde. And this is in your 12th house of subconscious. So I think oh, pay attention to your dreams. Pay attention to dreams, really like uh, deep, you know, mental aha moments um, around the 11th, particularly on the 11th. I've noticed the few hour Cassini with Mercury, um, you know, I've, I've done a, some testing with some people and it's sort of like that the few hours it's, it's happening where Mercury's in the heart of the sun, people get these like downloads almost like they're, they're, um, it really is like a moment of clarity for a lot of people. And, and for you, it's happening in the 12th house of the subconscious, you know, where have you limited yourself? Where have you self-sabotaged yourself? I think a lot of you are going to have moments of clarity around that. And the moon, you know, Mercury rules over Gemini and the moon will go into Gemini as this, as this is happening. And Gemini is your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So I think a lot of you are going to have these like aha clarity moments where you can really step into your self-worth. You can really maybe get clarity around how you can increase your resources. Um, so I would pay close attention to the 11th and sort of sink into the feelings and the, um, the thoughts that come up around this time and particularly your dreams around this time. Now, on April 17th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. This is not exact until April 20th, but you're going to feel the Jupiter conjunct Uranus really, I think, for the last bit of April. Um, so this is happening in your first house of self, body, appearance, identity, how you show up in the world. So Jupiter, you know, Uranus is the, the awakener, the, the rebel, the, um, the innovator, expect the unexpected, lightning, sudden. Jupiter is fortune, luck, expansion, abundance. Whatever Jupiter touches, Jupiter expands. So this is all happening in your first house of the self, body, appearance, so I feel like there's so many subconscious sort of inner mental thoughts and processes going on that are integrating all these different areas of life, maybe shifting your perspective on it. And then towards the end of April, this conjunction happens in your first house where it's sort of like, boom, expand. And this could, you could literally have this like awakening moment in your body because it is the first house or this this expand like you you literally might expand sort of physically in the world um, or some of you may notice more abundance with yourself out in the world or with your identity and Venus will be conjunct the north node in 
that 12th house of subconscious and venus rules over your first house of self body so north node increase pulling in that direction so i see a lot of um subconscious mental body type of stuff and then i see a lot of physical body stuff start integrating towards the end of the month so maybe integrating sort of the internal with the external and being particularly strongly pulled in that direction and yeah this looks this looks very very interesting for Taurus risings and you know especially if you have personal placements um I would pay extra, extra attention if you have your ascendant around 20, 21, 22 degrees. That's where that conjunction's happening. Um, you'll, you'll feel it more in, intensely, that expansion and that sudden, you know, maybe a sudden awakening um, with all of the mental process stuff going on in the beginning of the month. But I mean... I like it. I like it. I think this is going to be um, welcomed for a lot of you after the past couple years where you're sort of almost like stepping into like this new identity, this new expansion around the body and the appearance um, after having those eclipses really rock the um, major areas of your life. Then uh, let's see, April 25th. Mercury will be conjunct the North Node at 15 degrees. And Mercury will go direct conjunct the North Node at 15 degrees as well. So think back what happened mid March that you could really be seeing forward movement around, particularly in the areas of resources, income, material possession, self-worth, and how you have fun, pleasure, romance, dating. I think you'll see a lot more forward movement after you've um, done a lot of subconscious work or, you know, the mental work and incorporating that into this like new physical you, this new identity, this new appearance, like this new you showing up in the world. How can you really move forward in a very, because the North Node, in a very faded, increased way, especially with the fun, the pleasure, the income, and resources. Then we really end the month, April 30th, with Mars entering your Aries 12th house, subconscious, and Venus entering your first house of self, body, appearance, and identity. So I think energetically, Mars moving into its home sign and Venus entering its home sign is going to be more familiar. We're going to be, you know, Mercury going direct the North Node, having more forward movement around those areas I mentioned. And then, you know, these, how we take action, what we love and value, sort of the masculine and the feminine, right? Venus and Mars entering their home signs where, you know, they they're more familiar. They have the things they need. They have their resources and it feels more familiar to them, I think, will help sort of ease that direct forward movement and, um, you know, initiation and change that we've been trying to implement for some time now. So just keep that in mind. I am really excited for you Taurus Risings. It seems like you're going to have some really um, new, you know, new beginnings and initiating new change for new strength and new stability, but really stepping into, I think for a lot of you, like literally stepping into a new version of yourself. Hello, Gemini rising. On April 1st, Mercury will go retrograde at 27 degrees in your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. This is important because Mercury rules you, rules over your first house of self, body, appearance, identity, and how you show up in the world, but it also rules over your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. So I think starting off the month, I think a lot of you are going to be contemplating a home and family situation, um, really thinking about 
you know, your body, your appearance, yourself, how, you know, your own identity and how you show up in the world. But in particular, in a way where, you know, it's showing up with your friends, your groups, your communities, and those long-term goals. What's interesting on April 1st is in addition to this Mercury retrograde, Venus will be conjunct Neptune in Pisces at 27 degrees. So this Mercury retrograde and this Venus-Neptune conjunction in Pisces is semi-sextile. And semi-sextile is a minor aspect where it's sort of like two roommates that comfortably coexist with each other, but they live totally different lives. And so this tells me that a lot, a lot of us are going to be feeling like there's two completely separate areas that we're being pulled into that don't have much overlap. And for you, it's going to be the friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals, and that career and public recognition. So the... It's, it's interesting, like I think a lot of you are going to be contemplating, you know, you, your identity, how you show up in the world, you know, the, the home and family situation and those long-term goals, but then, you know, in an entirely different area, you're going to be sort of wanting to escape with your career or your work. Um, the Venus, Venus Neptune is, is kind of escape energy and this is in the area of career for you. So I think, you know, you're going to be pulled long-term goals, you home and family situation. And, you know, maybe for some of you, the career is going to be sort of where you can escape whatever situation is playing out. So just keep that in mind. On April 5th, Venus will enter your Aries 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Venus rules your 5th house of fun, pleasure, creativity, dating, romance, and it also rules your 12th house of subconscious. So I think Venus, you know, Venus is a little, is Venus and Aries is a very different energy than Venus is um, used to operating. So I think when it comes to your friends, your groups, your communities, and long-term goals, that Venus is going to come in and say, I want what I want, and I'm going to go after it. Um, and because Venus rules your 5th and your 12th, I think you're going to be, you know, thinking certain things or certain visions or thoughts are going to come up. And you're also going to be contemplating, okay, maybe some of you are going to, with the 5th house playing out, wanting to have you know, more fun, incorporate more pleasure, um, excitement in your life while, you know, Venus goes through the 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals where you're sort of like how I see it, making it happen. Um, you're, you're getting after it. Now, and additionally on April 5th, that North node will go conjunct the sun in your Aries 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Now the sun is exalted in Aries. This is good. Conjunct the North Node, which is increase, strong pull in that in that direction. So some of you might be seeing your network expand, your friends, groups, communities expand, your long-term goals expand. This is important in the grand scheme of things because keep in mind, in May, Jupiter is going to go. So literally in the next month, Jupiter is going to go into your first house. This is a really good thing. Jupiter is literally going to bless and expand and create more abundance around you. So, and Jupiter rules your 10th house of career, your seventh house of marriage, partnership, business partnership. So, you know, increasing more abundance in those areas as well. So how I see April playing out is like you really maybe wanting to expand the network, expand the friends, the groups, the communities, and long-term goals, sort of like a natural gear up in a, in a, in a unique way um, for that, that Jupiter transit through your first, which hasn't happened in about 12, 13-ish years. So 
the north node conjunct the sun in this area now the sun rules your third house of like immediate environment your siblings your extended family um you know your communication and such so you could be spending more time with siblings or ex you know extended family and in, in a way to expand your groups and your community and your long-term goals so i i particularly like this for you then a few days later on april 8th there is the new moon solar eclipse in Aries at 19 degrees conjunct Chiron. So as all this stuff has sort of, you know, been playing out for some time in March, April, or beginning of April, that new moon solar eclipse in your Aries 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals is this new beginning, this new chapter, new change initiating in this area around who you surround yourself with and your long-term goals and it's conjunct Chiron so how can you you know Chiron gets a bad reputation but Chiron's the healer and maybe maybe expanding your network or expanding your goals is sort of a healing experience for you given what you've gone through or maybe you form a connection with someone that you know feels really good for you in a healing way or maybe you just heal something within yourself that allows you to expand and create more increase around your network and your friends and your long-term goals that you couldn't quite see before then on april 10th mars will be conjunct saturn in your pisces 10th house of career public recognition mars rules over that 11th house of friends groups communities and long-term goals it also rules over your sixth house of daily work health and routines and so you know i think there's going to be some some situation playing out with the career the public recognition where you're you're really looking at your network who you surround yourself with trying to align yourself to your long-term goals um, again, the, the Mars Saturn conjunction is, you know, if you'll look it up, it's going to say horrible things, but it's not taking into account that it's happening in Pisces. If you look at the elemental makeup of these planets, you'll see that Pisces elemental makeup sort of mitigates, um, the malefic properties of Mars and Saturn. So I don't think it's going to be that bad. And I also don't think that this eclipse season is going to be that bad either. Um, when eclipses traditionally get a really bad reputation. Now, on April 11th, there will be the Mercury Cassimi in your Aries 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. This is really, really important for you because Mercury rules you, rules your first house of self and your fourth house of home and family. So this could be this aha moment or a moment of clarity around who you surround yourself with and your long-term goals, but in a way where it gives you clarity around a home family property, real estate situation, or clarity around literally you and how you want to show up in the world. It's also interesting because as this Mercury Cassimi is happening, Mercury rules over Gemini the moon will be entering your first house of Gemini. So this is definitely going to have an impact on you, but the moon in Gemini is very intellectual. It wants to talk, it wants to learn. So I think this is ultimately going to be a really good thing um, on April 11th for, for a lot of you Gemini risings where there is this like, it, almost like I see it like this with everything else going on this moment of like oh this is what happened or oh this is why a b and c happened I kind of see it yeah I kind of see it especially for Gemini Risings where it's almost like um this moment where Everything that's unfolded, you know, if you listen to the intro, it will, it will make more sense 
why I'm saying this, but I think it's it's a moment where you might look back on this, the past six months and go, oh, that's why I was led here. So just keep that in mind. Now on April 17th, Jupiter will go conjunct Uranus. Now this conjunction is exact on April 20th, but I wanted to talk about it a few days earlier because I think we're all going to feel this conjunction really maybe the second half of April, last week of April. Um, and this is happening in your 12th house of subconscious. So this this is a very big deal, especially, again, when you zoom out and you see the transits, they're not individual events. They're part of a whole story. It's this whole living, breathing system. And the Mercury Kissimmee happening and, you know, Mercury going conjunct the North Node and that aha moment of maybe, oh, this is why this is happening or this is the moment of clarity where I, I get it now you know I can see I can see and this Jupiter Uranus conjunction in your 12th house of subconscious I think is playing into that Uranus is the awakener the rebel the the innovator and it's sudden it happens a lot of times very suddenly it's why it rules over lightning um and Jupiter is abundance and expansion and fortune. And these two coming together and sort of expanding that and sort of kind of like exploding it out. And in the 12th house of the subconscious, like your dreams, your visions, um, where you limit yourself, where you self-sabotage yourself, where do you hold yourself back? And these two coming together, it's sort of like you have that Mercury Kissimmee, you have that that clarity, that that moment, and then these two planets come together and your 12th is subconscious, you know, your dreams, boom, expansion in like a very mental subconscious dreamlike way. I would pay very close attention to your dreams in April with this conjunction happening because there could be sort of this awakening moment or this, this, I get it sort of moment. And especially because Uranus is considered the higher octave of Mercury and with the Mercury Cassimi happening and then the Uranus Jupiter conjunction happening I kind of see it part of the story of like you're going to get sort of this higher octave understanding given what's happened so you know you know it's going to be interesting it's going to be interesting and then the same you know around this time Venus is going to be conjunct around this time of April 17th. Again, I really think it's like the second half of April, last week of April situation. But as this conjunction, this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction happens, Venus goes conjunct the North Node in your Aries 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. And Venus rules over that area that Jupiter and Uranus are going conjunct. Venus is, is their landlord. And that is significant because it's telling me whatever's going on with, you know, your network or your friends, your groups, your communities, your long-term goals, you're going to have like that moment of like, oh, you know, I hope that makes sense. And then on April 25th, Mercury goes conjunct the North Node at 15 degrees Aries, 11th house, friends, groups, communities, long-term goals. Mercury rules you, your home, family, property, real estate. Mercury goes conjunct the North Node, goes direct the North Node. So this is significant because the North Node is involved where there is a point of pull and increase in that direction. And this tells me that whatever played out in March and April, you're going to have moments of understanding or clarity or maybe even moments that give you direction towards those long-term goals. And then there's forward movement. Mercury goes conjunct that north node. Boom, done, pull that direction. Forward movement. And then we really end the month April 30th when Mars enters its home sign of Aries 
your 11th house, friends, groups, communities, long-term goals. And Venus enters its home sign of Taurus, 12th house of subconscious. So it's sort of like we initiate new beginnings and change. And for you, Gemini, it looks like you're really getting, you're gaining like a deeper understanding of something. You're having moments of clarity of maybe what has unfolded in the past six months. Where are you initiating new change and a new chapter in your life? And how can you start thinking about expanding your friends or expanding your network or expanding your long-term goals? And also considering the home, family, property, real estate. Maybe some of you are considering, you know, how can I change my home to accommodate the change? Maybe some of you are thinking about moving. Where can I move to accommodate that necessary change? And with Mars and Venus entering their home sign at the end of the month, it's sort of like we've kind of gone, it seems like we've gone through a couple weeks of having to learn how to take action and make choices, like make choices and take action in ways we're not familiar with or not used to doing. And then at the end of the month, with those planets entering their home sign, it's kind of, it signifies to me that you'll be ending the month feeling like that change, that action, what you love and value, what you've uncovered becomes a lot more familiar. Hello, Cancer Risings. On April 1st, we have the, we have Mercury going retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. So this is your 10th house of career, business, public image, public recognition. And Mercury rules over your 12th house of subconscious, where you limit yourself, where you self-sabotage yourself. And it also rules over your third house of really your immediate environment, communication. And, you know, this is probably going to start a couple week period where you're starting to review and revise maybe you know, your subconscious or maybe where you limit yourself or self-sabotage yourself or reviewing how you communicate within your career, your business, your public image. Now, what's really interesting about this is Venus will be conjunct Neptune in, in Pisces, in your Pisces ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, and um, international travel at 27 degrees. So what's interesting is that this Mercury retrograde is going to be semi-sextile this Venus-Neptune conjunction in your ninth house. So I'll break this down because I know that's a lot to process. (laughs) So you're going to be reviewing and revising something about your business, your career, your, your public reputation. And at the same time, you might be wanting to escape on, maybe some of you are going to be wanting to take a trip or go on vacation or sort of escape into your own spirituality, religion, escape into your own knowledge or pursuing more information or more, you know, education, whatever it may be. What's interesting about the semi-sextile is it's sort of like two roommates that have nothing in common they comfortably coexist with each other. So how I look at it for you, Cancer Rising, is really you're, you're moving into April where a part of you is going to be feel really pulled towards reviewing and revising your career, your business, your public recognition. But then another part of you is really just going to want to maybe travel or seek more education or just be within your religion or your spirituality. Um, And so I think the key here is just to understand that as you go into April, you might be heavily pulled in two entirely separate areas that don't have much overlap or don't want to overlap. And it's important to compartmentalize it. Um, you know, do what you need to do to focus on 
you know, the business and the career and then schedule in time for you to sort of escape into exploring more spirituality or escape a weekend getaway or, you know, escape into learning, gaining more knowledge that might not have anything to do with your current line of business or career. Then on April 5th, Venus enters Aries which is, again, your 10th house of career, business, public reputation, stuff like that. Now, Venus is not used to operating in Aries, typically. Um, So Venus rules over your 4th house of home, family, property, and real estate. Venus also rules over your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So at the same time, you might enter April really thinking about, you know, maybe trying to take an entirely different approach to work and career or your public image, but in a way that, you know, you might be feeling a little bit more gung-ho about it, wanting to go after it, but in a way that may be unfamiliar to some of you or feeling a bit different. And in a way where, you know, you might be integrating a home, family, property, real estate situation, you know, friends, groups, communities, and long-term goal situation within that. And additionally, on April 5th, what's interesting is that this North Node in your 10th house of career, business, public image will go conjunct the Sun. Now, the sun is exalted in Aries, so pretty pretty well resourced, and the north node is really going to pull you in this direction. Now, the sun rules your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So a lot of you could be heavily pulled into how can I increase my income? How can I increase my material possessions? within my business, my career, my public image. Um, And Venus there tells me you might be doing it in a different way or taking a different route in order to do it Um, and have some situations playing out with home, family, property, real estate, friends, long-term goals. Then on April 8th, there will be the new moon solar eclipse in your Aries 10th house of career, business, public image and again this is at 19 degrees and it's going to be conjunct Chiron now Chiron gets a bad reputation but ultimately Chiron was a healer he was an incredible healer and so where is this you know what new beginning or necessary change do you need to initiate within your business your career and or public image where you can heal others, you can sort of heal yourself, or what can you heal within yourself in order to step into that change, in order to initiate that new chapter. Then on April 10th, Mars goes conjunct Saturn in your Pisces ninth house. Now Mars rules over your 10th house of business, career, public image. So this is definitely like another indicator that the the work, the career, the public image is going to be um, more, even more influenced around this time. And, you know, this conjunction coming together, Mars rules the career, the business. It also rules your fifth house of creativity and self-expression. And then it's conjunct Saturn. Saturn rules your 7th house of partnership and your 8th house of sex, death, transformation, assets, investments, death. So as this career and business situation is going on and you're really trying to initiate and change or start something new, what, what is coming together in terms of your beliefs, your spirituality, your knowledge, where you might need partnership or you might need, you know, some level of transformation or, you know, a resource in order to initiate that. 
Now, on April 11th, the next day, there will be a Mercury Cassini in your Aries 10th house of career, business, public image. Mercury Cassini is when Mercury's in the heart of the sun. So Mercury's been retrograde. Now Mercury goes in the heart of the sun and it gives us a moment of clarity. Sort of this aha moment. Now, like I said, Mercury rules your 12th house of subconscious, where you limit yourself, where you self-sabotage yourself. And it also rules your third house of communication. So whatever's playing out with the business, the career, the public image, April 11th looks like a day where you're going to have more clarity and more understanding of the situation that's playing out. And for you, it's it's likely going to show up within your communication and within your dreams and your subconscious. Like your mental state is going to it's it's going to likely come through um, subconsciously or dream wise or you know vision wise more like the hidden the hidden areas it's not going to be so uh, public or noticeable it's going to be an internal experience where I think you'll gain more clarity around this review and revise around what you want to do with your business what you want to do with your career how do you want to change your public image? And, you know, with all that stuff in your in your ninth house, like maybe maybe there's other elements within your spirituality or your religion. Ninth house is also teaching. Um, what do you, you know, what's changing around how you want to teach or um, how you want to travel or, um, you know, maybe some of you are wanting to learn new things or do something different to create a new business or a new career. Um, So just keep that in mind. That moment of clarity, I think, is really going to help around the 11th or on the 11th. Then on April 17th, Jupiter goes conjunct Uranus in your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, long-term goals. Now, this conjunction will be exact on April 20th, but in my personal opinion, I think people are going to feel this the second half of April really the last week of April. So the the exact day is, yes, the exact conjunction, but you're going to feel it, I think, when it's applying to the conjunction days leading up to it. So pay attention, second half of April, last week of April, um, where this Jupiter, Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, what can this signify? Jupiter rules your sixth house of health, daily work, daily routines, also rules your ninth house of that higher education, spirituality, religion, travel. Going conjunct Uranus. Uranus is the awakener, the rebel, the innovator. And it's happening in your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So with everything playing out with like the the career, the business, you know, all that stuff I mentioned, Jupiter wants to expand whatever it touches. So it's sort of like this maybe awakening moment or this innovator moment or the rebel moment where Jupiter expands, creates more abundance in your 11th house of, you know, friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. Maybe, maybe you find a community, maybe you find a group or Um, With Jupiter ruling over that ninth and the sixth, maybe there is opportunity to travel or um, create something new within your line of work or take a different direction suddenly or sort of rebelliously that really changes and expands your long-term goals. Um, At the same time, Venus is going to go conjunct the North Node in your 10th house of business, career, public image. So that's, I think, with all the overlapping situations, I really think a lot of you are going to be thinking differently about like your business, your career, your public image in a way where you're either going to be like traveling for work or contemplating either doing international work or um, going back to school, educating yourself to take a different direction, um, forming new groups and communities, maybe internationally or outside of your normal day-to-day suddenly, and maybe suddenly 
changing your long-term goals in regards to what you do or what you want to do. And then on April 25th, Mercury goes conjunct the North Node in your 10th house of business, career, public image. And Mercury rules the 12th house of subconscious and third house of communication. Now Mercury going conjunct the North Node, Mercury will go direct conjunct the North Node, which is very, very important because the North Node is, is sort of faded. It pulls us in a certain direction. It increases that area. And this is your business, your career, your public image. And so whatever you've reviewed and revised and wanted to, you know, change maybe in your business or take a different direction or maybe implement more travel or education, um, you know, groups, communities, whatever it may be, I think the end of April, there will be the forward movement around that um, where you have more clarity and forward movement around sort of what's going on mentally, what's going on subconsciously, and being able to communicate that in order to make that happen. Then on April 30th, we're really ending the month with Mars entering its home sign of Aries. Again, business, career, public image. And Venus entering its home sign of Taurus. Friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. So whatever you wanted to initiate, whatever you wanted to change, especially in regards to like education, travel, business, career, long-term goal stuff, um, it might have felt like you had to take a different route or you had to do things differently or there was, you know, a review and revise period. We're really ending the month where the forward movement is there. And these two planets of like what we love and value versus how we take action are entering their home sign where they're more comfortable. It feels more familiar. It's like if you were in, if you were home, you, you know, it's your own environment. You're familiar with it. You have all your resources and needs and you're fairly comfortable. And so we're ending the month with forward movement, but also I think more familiar feelings of how we need to initiate that change um, and new chapter where there's more strength and stability and for you it's really the four angles of the chart right so your business your career you your home your family and ultimate and your partnership and how I think for you there's going to be a heavy emphasis on the business career public image and initiating more change to maybe create more strength and stability within yourself, your home, family, property, real estate, and your long-term partnerships. Hello, Leo Risings. On April 1st, Mercury will go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. So this is happening in your ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, and travel. So think about, you know, what is ultimately needing a revisionary period around those themes. Maybe you're considering going back to school. Maybe travel is a thing in your life or you want it to be a thing in your life. Or maybe you are, you know, diving into your spirituality, your religion, your beliefs regarding a situation playing out in your life right now. Now, Mercury rules your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals, and your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So whatever you're reviewing and revising, it's definitely going to involve who you surround yourself with, those long-term goals you have, and you're certainly most likely going to be thinking about, you know, a money situation, um, a budgeting situation, and, you know, maybe in reference to achieving a long-term goal or, um, you know, material possessions and most importantly, your self-worth. What's interesting on the first as well, as this Mercury retrograde is taking place, Venus will, go, Venus will be conjunct Neptune in your Pisces eighth house of sex, death, transformation, um, your partner's money if applicable, and, you know, really like your investments, your assets, you know, taxes, it's tax season, 
um, loans, debt. And it's interesting because the Mercury will be semi-sextile, this Venus-Neptune conjunction. And the semi-sextile is a minor aspect where it's sort of like two roommates living together that don't have anything in common. They have totally different friends, totally different lives, but they comfortably coexist with one another. And so that tells me that there is a high probability that you will feel like there is two completely separate things going on in your life that don't have much in common. And a part of you is going to want to likely escape into one versus the other. So, you know, pay attention to where you're being pulled to um, travel, learn, teach, uh, spirituality, religion, in reference to who you surround yourself with, your long-term goals, and your income. But at the same time, you might be pulled towards like doing your taxes or, you know, looking at your investments or your debt. So it's sort of like the higher spiritual um, realms will be going on versus sort of these like budget, tangible, like, you know, day to day, what's going on with my money, what's going on with my goals, what's going on with my investments or my partner's money. Um, so I would just say going into April, try to compartmentalize your days or your times to focus on, you know, maybe you travel for work or maybe you, you want to do a particular trip. Maybe you really want to dive into your spirituality or, you know, expanding your knowledge on something, your long-term goals, spending, you know, expanding, you know, reviewing and revising your friends who you surround yourself with, you know, the income situation, self-worth situation and then you know then pencil in the time for okay I gotta do my taxes and pay my bills and invest my money and you know whatever transformation I need to do um, in the meantime as well so lots of Leo risings are it's 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 kind of a weird start to April Um, Then April 5th, Venus will enter your Aries ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, travel. Now Venus rules your 10th house of career and public image, and it also rules your third house of communication, siblings, extended family. Some of you might be traveling for work. Some of you might be connecting or traveling with siblings or extended family. Um, Either way, the connection between the 9th and the 10th, there could be some travel or connection involved between the work, the extended family or the siblings where maybe there's, you know, third house communication, where there's communication that ignites knowledge, that ignites um, spirituality that, you know, and Venus and Aries is going to operate very differently. So, Venus and Aries is very, I want what I want and I'm going to get it. And so I think there's going to be an element of really wanting to focus on a travel situation or your beliefs or your spirituality or learning, like expanding your knowledge. Um, Or especially if you're teachers, educators, this is going to be really important transit. Um, Yeah, and somehow the career, the business, the public image will be integrated within that. Maybe learning for the career or traveling for the career or, you know, um, deepening your spiritual connection to your career, your business, your public image. Looks Again, this looks like a really kind of weird April. Um, I'm a Leo rising myself, so I'm kind of looking at this like, Okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, And again, on April 5th, the North Node will go conjunct the Sun in your Aries ninth house. The Sun is exalted in Aries, so the Sun is very well resourced. But more importantly, you know, the first week of April is very important, I think, for Leo Risings, particularly because the Sun rules you. The sun rules your first house of self, body, appearance, identity, how you show up in the world. And so 
the sun going conjunct the north node north node is increase it is pull towards that direction in a very very strong way and so it's sort of like being pulled towards what do you believe what do you know to be true um maybe a travel situation um but in a way where it is directly impacting how you show up in the world your your body your appearance your identity so it's gonna be very interesting how like the body the appearance the identity is sort of showing up in the world but in a way where it's happening in a ninth house way the beliefs the, the spirituality um, the knowledge component will be very very interesting then april 8th there's a new moon solar eclipse in this aries ninth house at 19 degrees conjunct chiron so there's some sort of initiation or really strong new beginning involving your beliefs, your knowledge, your travel, what you know to be true, your spirituality, your religion, all that stuff is sort of having this like new beginning, this maybe maybe new new faith or new direction. Um, and it's conjunct Chiron. Chiron gets a bad reputation, but Chiron was one of the best healers. So where is this a where is this new beginning a healing experience for you? Where can you heal yourself or or parts of your situation in order for you to step into this new beginning around your knowledge, your travel, your beliefs, spirituality, all of that. So it looks like a very powerful um internal experience where that north node sun ruling that first house of self um, is sort of making it's it seems like this very powerful inner spiritual situation where the career is you know playing a part in it but it's sort of where it's shining is you so I think whatever's going on with your beliefs your education you know, certain experiences you have with travel or desire to travel, it could have a direct impact on literally like how you show up in the world, um, your appearance, your identity. So very, very fascinating. But I honestly kind of like it. I think it's going to be, I think for a lot of Leo Risings, it's going to be a powerful shift in the way you show up in the world, um, in the almost sort of like how can you take your knowledge your beliefs and show up in the world where you can shine right the sun leo um shining on april 10th a few days later mars will go conjunct saturn in your pisces eighth house of sex death transformation your um you know your partner's resources investments assets debt all of that so this could just be like taxis and stuff if you live in the U.S. Um, but Mars rules that ninth house of beliefs, travel, higher education. It also rules the fourth house of home, family, property, real estate. In the conjunction with Saturn. Saturn rules your sixth house of work, health, routine. Your seventh house of partnership, marriage, uh, business partnership. So something could be going on in terms of the assets, the investments, uh, your partner's money, any transformational work that you're doing that has a direct effect on the home, family, property, real estate, you know, your work, your routine, your health, your, your partner, marriage, business partnership. Um, Mars conjunct Saturn, if you look it up, it will say terrible, terrible things. However, it's not taking into account the elemental makeup and where it actually is. So because Mars and Saturn are basically, I don't want to get too much into it because it, it's probably going to be confusing and redundant for some of you, but um, basically what I'm trying to say, when Mars and Saturn come together in Pisces, like Pisces being a a, a, a wet water sign it sort of mitigates the more um the abilities of these planets like they're more malefic qualities so I actually think there could be a, a positive 
um, element to this where whatever's going on with, you know, money, investments, whatnot, I think there will be, it could positively, there could be resources and um, help and opportunity to create a more positive impact with home, family, property, real estate, health, daily work, daily routine, and um, within your long-term partnerships or business partnerships as well. Now, April 11th, the next day, Mercury will go Cassini in your Aries ninth house. This is really, really important on the 11th because Mercury Cassini is when Mercury is in the heart of the sun. So Mercury will have gone retrograde where it's sort of this review and revise period around long-term goals, you know, who you surround yourself with, your money, your material possessions, your self-worth, and then boom, Cassini. It's in the heart of the sun. Now, Mercury will still be retrograde, but that heart of the sun moment is really, really important because it's the moment of clarity within the retrograde. So it's sort of like you'll get you'll get a few hours on April 11th where you might feel like you get it. It's that aha moment of like, all right, this is, I see it now. And it's likely going to affect who you surround yourself with and your long-term goals and you know the money you make and your self-worth where you're able to potentially shift your knowledge your beliefs your spirituality um maybe integrate those areas as well like you know using your your spirituality your connection your your education where it's sort of this this aha moment where you're like, I see it, I get it, I, I know what I need to do with it. So I would pay close attention to the 11th where you're going to be able to see maybe a solution um, or see what needs to happen in a, in, a, in, a, in a grounded way. Then on April 17th, Jupiter goes conjunct Uranus in your Taurus 10th house of career and public image business stuff. So this conjunction will actually be exact on April 20th. However, I think the applying aspects in particular are felt pretty strongly by most people. So I would say the second half of April, maybe the last week of April, where you're going to see a shift in the business and the career in the um the public public image you know you have uranus which is sort of the the innovator the rebel the works kind of like suddenly right and jupiter is abundance and expansion and these two coming together in the 10th house of business career public image is really i think going to um help a lot of leo risings especially if you have your midheaven around like 20 degrees ish of Taurus pay really close attention to this this is you know sort of a once in a lifetime for you if your midheaven is around that point um where you could see some sudden change or sudden expansion or opportunity around the business the career and the public image Jupiter rules that eighth house of other people's resources, transformation, and your fifth house of creativity and self-expression. So there could be the ability to create more resources within the career or the business or increase, you know, uh, maybe even increase your money. Mercury will still be, you know, retrograde. So I think if there is work opportunities coming up where you have to negotiate income I think at this point you could still be negotiating that income whether you know it's a raise a promotion or a complete change of jobs um, I think you're going to be thinking about sort of the money component and reevaluating you know you're you know stepping into your self-worth what are you worth um, revising all of that stuff so pay attention to that for sure and again, on April 17th, Venus will be conjunct the North Node in that Aries ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, and travel. 
Venus rules that 10th house of career business and also your third house of communication daily environment so this is definitely going to pull you towards you know maybe teaching or um learning sinking into your beliefs travel pertaining to work business communication those kinds of things so all those are kind of on the table again you have to apply this to your individual chart your individual fingerprint to get a closer understanding of what specifically is influencing you then on april 25th mercury will finally go conjunct the north node where mercury will go direct so this is very important because what have you reviewed and revised in terms of who you surround yourself with your long-term goals and your earned income over the past month rough yeah about month and a half at this point what have you reviewed and revised around those things now it's coming to a point where it's going to start going direct things are going to start moving forward in that department and this is good this is really good because a few days later we're really ending the month with venus entering its home sign taurus which is the 10th house of career business public recognition for you and mars entering its home sign of Aries, which is the ninth house of higher education, travel, spirituality, religion as well for you. So it's sort of like we kind of have to initiate change and, you know, like close things out and begin things to create more, to start new and create more strength and stability. And again, with planets sort of entering different signs and operating in different ways, having to review and revise but also find alternative ways to achieve what we want to achieve and initiate that action and then things move forward at the end of the month in addition to these two planets sort of entering their home sign where they can operate in more familiar ways and for you it's gonna you're gonna end the month likely feeling more familiar around how you take action and what you love and value pertaining to what you know to be true, your spirituality, your beliefs, travel, career, business, and public image. Hello, Virgo rising. On April 1st, Mercury will go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. Now, this is happening in your eighth house of sex death transformation your partner's money if applicable investments assets taxes debt it is tax season in the u.s so definitely um, pay attention to that if that resonates with you however this mercury retrograde is important because mercury mercury rules you and it rules yourself the body so What's interesting about this is the this Mercury retrograde for you is actually a verse to your first house of self. So in astrology, we call this aversion. So it's sort of like say you um, say you you owned a home in a neighborhood, and then you went to visit another home in that neighborhood. And in that particular home that you were visiting, you couldn't see your own home. So it's sort of like aversion is like when a planet can't, it can't see. And a particular area, it's sort of a blind spot in the chart. And so I want you to keep this in mind. If you're, if you're moving through this Mercury retrograde and you're just feeling like, I can't quite put my, my finger on it or like, you just kind of feel maybe lost in the sauce or you feel like it's really hard for you to see ahead. Um, you know, anything along those lines, I, you know, don't be alarmed. It will pass. It's just a season. It's just sometimes like things can't see or there's blind spots going on. And unfortunately for you, um, that's kind of how the month is starting. However, it's happening for a reason. 
A lot of times when we have a blind spot or we can't quite see what's on the other side, it's because we need to have faith and we need to trust what is happening and trust the process. Now for a lot of Virgo risings, that's going to be challenging because you're most likely more used to being analytical about things um, as a Virgo rising, but that Pisces descendant in your chart says, you know, how can you incorporate or step into um, having more faith and uh, trust, you know, the process unfolding. So just wanted to start that off in terms of that aversion situation playing out. However, the same day on April 1st, Venus will be conjunct Neptune in your Pisces seventh house of marriage, partnership, and business partnership at 27 degrees. This Mercury retrograde and Venus-Neptune conjunction will be semi-sextile. Now, all you need to know about semi-sextiles is that they're a minor aspect that can often indicate that it's sort of like two roommates who live completely different lives, different friends, but they comfortably coexist with one another. And so sometimes when I see this, it's, it, you know, it, it signifies for me that we are going to be pulled in two different areas of life that don't overlap. And so it might feel wonky. It's sort of like, you know, part of you is like, oh, I got to take care of this. And the other part is like, well, I really need to do this. And, you know, it's hard to maybe, um, multitask or focus on one without thinking about the other. Um, So going into April, you know, think about in terms of the Mercury retrograde, okay, the first area that you might feel pulled is reviewing and revising yourself, your body, your appearance, your identity, and also your business, your career, and your public image. And in a way where it could show up with your transformation, your investments, your assets, your, you know, long-term money situation, or if you're partnered up, you know, your partner's money situation. What's going on that's having you review and revise your work, your career, and yourself? What do you want to change? What do you want to transform? What do you want to invest in in order to maybe start considering that change within yourself or your career? On the other hand, the second area that you're going to likely feel pulled towards on the other end of the spectrum is your partnerships, your marriage, your business partnership, really any long-term partnership situation playing out. And because it's a Venus-Neptune conjunction, you're probably going to want to escape within your partnerships. Uh, Whether you're singled or coupled up, I think a lot of you might feel like you want to seek um, like salvage or escape into your partnerships to maybe avoid the career situation or avoid, you know, parts of yourself situation. And certainly the, you know, the money, the investments, that kind of stuff. So if you feel pulled in those two different directions, I would say, you know, don't it's, it's neither good nor bad. It's just make sure you're taking the time to uh, think about what you want to change about yourself, how you show up, what you want to change about your career, how those two areas work together. And then, you know, finding time to enjoy your partnership or your partnerships and sort of escape and enjoy yourself with that. A few days later on April 5th, Venus will then enter your Aries 8th house of sex, death, transformation, partners, money, investments, assets, debt, loans, all that. So this is going to change the energy where 
Venus is um, Venus is going to operate very differently in Aries from you know where she's coming from in Pisces. So Venus in Aries is you know very I want what I want. Um, so I think come April fifth, you might start to feel more um, more focused on the long term money, the investments, the assets, the transformation. Um, after a period of maybe feeling like you want to escape uh, within your partnerships or a desire for partnership. And additionally, on April 5th, the North Node will be conjunct the Sun in your Aries 8th house, really amplifying this area. So the Sun rules your 12th house of subconscious dreams where you limit yourself, where you self-sabotage yourself, so I think for some of you, it might be the money situation, but for a lot of you, it could be the transformation. How do you change where you limit yourself or where you're holding yourself back? Where can you invest in yourself or invest in other areas of your life in order to you know change it or expand it or increase it, right? The North Node is increase, it's growth, it's desire to move towards that area. And the sun is exalted here, so very well resourced. So I think a lot of you are going to be really pulled towards these eighth house matters. But again, that eighth house is averse to the first house of self. So you might feel like it's unfamiliar to you, quite literally. Or um, you might feel like it's, you know, you have to take some time to sort of like integrate it or try to formulate a vision. But ultimately, it could just be you having to take action in this area of transformation, long-term, you know, money resources, partners resources, and in a way where, yeah, maybe you can't see the other side of it or, you know, down the road, but it's important to trust the process and have faith as you're being pulled in that direction. Then on April 8th, there's the new moon solar eclipse in Aries. Again, eighth house, success, transformation, partners, money, investments, assets, debt, taxes, all that stuff. Um, and this new moon solar eclipse in Aries is going to be at 19 degrees. So if you know your chart, anything around 19 degrees in your chart is going to heavily influence that. But this new moon solar eclipse is like a new beginning, a really strong new beginning happening around, you know, any transformational work. Uh, maybe some of you are in therapy. Uh, maybe some of you are heavily focused on, you know, long-term money management, your investments, your assets, um, heavily focused on your partner's money. What are your partner's resources? And really initiating change and a new beginning around those things will likely take place but it's also conjunct Chiron. Chiron gets a bad reputation but Chiron if you really read the story of Chiron you realize for the majority of Chiron's life I mean Chiron was like the greatest healer so how can this be a healing experience for you? How can you um as you move through the month, as you're reviewing and revising with that Mercury retrograde going on, how can you maybe review and revise things that no longer work for you, that may be holding you back with your money management or with what you want to transform? Um, you know, it's, it's interesting with, with money, with the money houses, because with astrology it's it's often a tool of okay where can we see increase decrease you know investment you know certain themes or influences but ultimately money money just increases things it just amplifies things so with this transit especially with the north node in this house this money house what do you want to increase what do you want to amplify? And if you have things that you don't want to amplify, what do you need to heal? What do you need to transform so that you amplify what you want and you don't 
amplify what you don't want. So just, you know, just a, just a thought as I'm looking at this. Then a few days later on April 10th, Mars goes conjunct Saturn and Pisces. Mars rules that eighth house, but it also rules your third house of communication, conjunct Saturn. Saturn rules your fifth house of creativity, pleasure, romance, dating, and your sixth house of daily work, health, and routines. So where can you, whether you're single or coupled up, how can you either seek partnership or seek within your partnership more communication, more creativity, more fun, more pleasure? And also, how can you seek a partnership or seek within your partnership a way to balance your health and your routine and your work for an overall better life, better health? Um, this is going to be, this is probably going to have a direct impact on you because this conjunction is opposing your first house. So you're definitely going to be able to see it, but I think it's getting you to see things about yourself where it's like, okay, the seventh house is like the mirror to the first. So for you, this conjunction could bring up or mirror back to you certain things where you can see, okay, I want, this is, this is how I can have better communication. This is how I can incorporate more pleasure and fun in my life. And this is how I can create a better healthy routine in order to set up success in all the other areas of my life. So it's sort of like, I would say in April, you know, whether, whether you're single or not, you can sort of use either previous partnerships or current partnerships to mirror back to you this month where, like, what can you, what can you initiate? What can you change to, um, create more positivity in your life? Um, initiate more of those positive changes. Now, the next day on April 11th, Mercury will go Cassini in that Aries 8th house. So, again, Mercury rules you. It also rules your 10th house of career and public image happening in your 8th house. So, the Cassini is when Mercury's been retrograde and then Mercury enters the heart of the sun. So, for a few hours on April 11th, a lot of you could get this aha moment, this moment of clarity around you around your career your public image it's happening in your eighth house so the clarity could have a direct impact on you know your sex death transformation your investments your assets taxes you know any any of the partner's money if that's applicable um, but ultimately you know that's likely where it's going to show up, but it's, it's, it could have an impact directly on you and your career. But the Mercury Kazemi is sort of, it's more of a positive thing. So it's, it's literally that aha moment. It's that moment of clarity of like, oh, I can, I can see it now. I can, I can see a little bit, a little bit better. And, um, after this, you know, as you're in the thick of the review and revise period, I mean, af I mean, we're all going to be in it. Um, but I think you're going to be, you know, in the thick of that review and revise and then that Kasimi happens on the 11th and it's sort of like, oh, I can see now, like, what I need to do. Like, the, it, the path becomes more clear at this point, in my opinion. Then on April 17th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. Now, this conjunction is technically exact on April 20th, but I think... The majority of us are going to feel it the second half of April, predominantly the last week of April. So this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening in your ninth house of higher education, continuing education, spirituality, religion, and travel. Some of you could be suddenly traveling, sudden, um, you know, maybe inquiring 
um, continuing your education or just expanding your knowledge, not necessarily in a, in a formal way, but just, you know, expanding your knowledge. And then some of you might be really suddenly expanding your spirituality or your religion through what's going on right now. Now, Jupiter rules your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate, and your seventh house of marriage, partnership, and business partnership. So whether you're partnered or not, I think the home, family, property, real estate, and the desire for partnership or the current partnership could have this sudden awakening or sudden shift around your belief. Or maybe something happens with home, family, or within a partnership that suddenly shifts and expands your knowledge and your beliefs. Or on a more superficial layer, some of you quite literally just might be suddenly traveling with a partner or traveling with family members or traveling to see family members or a partner. And so there's a lot on the table here, but ultimately these two coming together, it's like very expansive, um, very faith, higher mind um, playing out. And again, for you, I would pay close attention to the partnership area, whether you're single or not, and the home, family, property, real estate, because those areas are going to be heavily influenced with um, your choice around continuing education, travel, spirituality, or religion. On the same day, April 17th, we have Venus conjunct the North Node in the 8th house of sex, death, transformation, investments, assets, all that. So Venus rules over that that ninth house, like belief, spirituality, travel situation I just talked about. Now what's interesting with this is, again, depends on your personal placements. I don't know unless... I have a one-on-one -on -one session with you. Um, however, some of you might be with the eighth house, uh, Venus. Venus conjunct the north node in the eighth. Venus rules your second house of earned income and the ninth. You could, there could be like a home family property real estate situation going on with that Jupiter Uranus conjunction, Jupiter ruling the fourth house of home and family. Yeah, I see some of you might be contemplating like a real estate or renovation or redecoration like suddenly or in a way where it's like, you know, adding equity to your home or, you know, looking into real estate as an investment or looking into some home, family, property, real estate situation that requires you to maybe increase your education on it or have a little bit more faith and in a way where you're looking for it to ex increase your your income increase your material possessions but if it's not that like I said previously like pay attention to spirituality religion education anything to do with like partner travel playing out then on April 25th, Mercury finally goes conjunct the North Node at 15 degrees Aries. Again, 8th house, success, transformation, investments, assets, all that stuff I mentioned. This is the point where Mercury goes conjunct the North Node and goes direct. And everything that was reviewed and revised and played out and what do I need to initiate? What do I need to start, change, especially with the eclipses? Um... And for you, the eclipses are happening in, in money houses. So I think a lot of you are going to be contemplating, you know, how does that affect me, my career, my long-term investment situation, my partnership, home, family, all that. By the end of April, like April 25th and on, Mercury goes conjunct the North Node. So fate, pull in that direction, but in a more direct way, sort of like giving you the green light to go. And for you, it's going to be involving you and your career and business and public image so I think you're going to see more forward movement around everything you've sort of kind of tousled with or untangled throughout the month and then what's great is we're really ending the month on April 30th when Mars is finally entering its home sign of Aries which is that eighth house for you 
And Venus is finally entering its home sign of Taurus, which is that ninth house of education, travel, spirituality, religion, all of that. So I think we're going to go through a period of, you know, closing things out, initiating change, making changes to create more strength and stability, starting new in these areas, and ultimately... It's going to require us to maybe take action in ways that we're not used to. But then we're closing out the month with a lot more forward movement. It looks more relieving to me after sort of untangling and finding new ways to initiate these change. And again, if you listen to the intro, I think a lot of these changes are going to be really positive. I think a lot of good things and good resources can come from your education, your knowledge, and your partnerships, if applicable in your life. And ultimately, you know, we can really end the month with not only forward movement, but more familiarity around what we love and value and ultimately how we take action. Hello, Libra Rising. On April 1st, Mercury goes retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. So this is happening in your seventh house of marriage, long-term partnerships, and business partnerships. Mercury rules your 12th house of subconscious, also rules your 9th house of beliefs, spirituality, religion, travel, and higher education. So there could be something starting to play out within a partnership, a marriage, or a business partnership that has a direct effect on your subconscious, your beliefs, your spirituality, or there could be something playing out with a partnership that is having a direct effect on, you know, you maybe having to travel for a partnership and it's having some effect on you mentally. Or there could be something happening within a partnership that, you know, you could be, some of you could be, again, it depends on your personal charts. But I'm just laying it out there as best I can in a general, you know, horoscope, which is very, very challenging to do to try to like make it as specific as possible for you. So I'm going to throw out um, any options that come up in my mind. But another another situation I could see playing out is that maybe some of you are limiting yourself or sabotaging yourself um, within the partnership. I see more so in a way where you could be like limiting yourself within the partnership or limiting the partnership because of your own beliefs or sabotaging behavior. So if some of you have those tendencies within partnership where you like sabotage um, the relationship for whatever reason, I would pay close attention to this. But in general, if you're married, if you're in a partnership, I would pay attention to like, you know, any travel that you're going to have to do together. Um, and, you know, something that is maybe going on where you're, you're, you're working with your beliefs and, you know, what's going on mentally beneath the surface within your you know with your partner what's interesting about this mercury retrograde is that on the same day it goes retrograde venus will be conjunct neptune in pisces so this is happening in you know your sixth house of daily work your routines your health and it's semi-sextile this mercury so all you need to know about the semi-sextile it's a minor aspect and it is sort of like two roommates that comfortably coexist, but they have nothing in common. They don't have friends in common. Their lives don't overlap in any way, but they're just kind of comfortably coexisting. They don't really have much in common. And so how I view this is sort of like something's going to be playing out within the partnership or a potential partnership or business partnership. And then on the other end of the spectrum, something is going to be playing out with your own, 
you know, focusing on your own health, focusing on your own daily work, your daily routines. Sixth house is also pets and coworkers. So, you know, pay attention to, you know, your pets, you know, friendships or connections with coworkers. Um, so it's sort of like these like two ends of the spectrum playing out and there's not much overlap between these two areas. Now, what's interesting about the Venus-Neptune conjunction is like a lot of you are probably going to want to escape into your routines, into your work, into, you know, your health, wellness, lifestyle versus the situation playing out within the partnership, the business partnership or the potential partnership. I say, you know, make sure you're balancing both. You're trying to find time for both so you don't feel so so pulled in different areas going into this month. But on April 5th, Venus will enter your Aries seventh house of marriage, partnership, business partnership. Venus rules you, rules your first house of self, body appearance, also rules your eighth house of sex, death, transformation, investments, assets, like your partner's money if applicable, So I think you're also going to be thinking about, you know, if you're partnered up, you're going to be thinking about what your partner's bringing to the table resources wise, or even if you're not partnered up, I think you'll think about, you know, literally because Venus rules you and this is happening in your seventh house of partnership. So thinking about aspects of yourself or things that are being mirrored back to you, um, that's getting you to look at certain areas of yourself within the partnership, if that makes sense. Um, Again, the eighth house is like transformation. So some of you could be going through wanting to transform or work with components of yourself to help um, expand the partnership. That north node is in the seventh house. It's pulling you in the direction of, of partnership. Um, whether you're single or not. So I think, you know, at a bare minimum, some of you are going to be thinking about, you know, your own self and how you, how do you fit into that partnership or how can you focus on certain things in order to move into that partnership? But ultimately, how do you balance you within the partnership? The same day on April 5th, that North Node in your Aries seventh house of marriage, partnership, and business partnership will be conjunct the Sun. So the Sun is actually exalted in Aries, conjunct the North Node, so heavily pulled in the direction of partnership or business partnership. Um, Sun, you know, conjunct that north node really pulled in that area. Now, the sun rules your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long term goals. So, on a very superficial layer, some of you might be heavily pulled in the direction of, you know, having more play, having more fun, being with your partner, with friends, groups, communities, or heavily pulled towards incorporating or going after long term goals within the partnership. Um, and again, Venus ruling you there is sort of like, looks like you contemplating what can you do to help move in that direction as well. So very, very interesting. Again, it depends on your personal situation, your personal chart. There's a lot that can go on within partnerships or potential partnerships, whether you're single, you're taken. So again, look, take this, apply it to your own chart. Again, I'm, I'm here to, for one-on-one sessions if you're totally confused or you're just not even interested in doing that, but you want to know. Um, again, certain areas of the chart are really depends on, you know, seventh house. Are you in a relationship? Are you not in a relationship? Um, so please apply this to your own charts. And of course, I'm here if you need the help. Then on April 8th, we finally have that second eclipse, that new moon solar eclipse in your Aries seventh house of partnership. And this is at 19 degrees. So if you have anything roughly around 19 degrees, pay very close attention to those placements as well. But ultimately, this is a new beginning. 
a new start in the area of partnership or the desire for partnership if you're single um what needs to initiate what needs to change what needs to you know in this area and this new moon solar eclipse is conjunct chiron chiron gets a really bad reputation but if you really read the story of chiron you realize that for pretty much the the whole life of chiron was he was the incredible healer so what is healing about the potential of a partnership what is healing within your current partnership um and in a way where you know where is there room for healing to be able to move more towards partnership and again this is business partnership as well and this is angular in your chart so there's a lot going on with you home and family partnership and career so even though this is happening in your seventh house it's going to have a direct impact on your career you home and family so just keep that in mind then a few days later on april 10th mars goes conjunct saturn in your pisces sixth house of daily work health and routine I would say pay very close attention to, you know, your health, your routines, your work. How are your routines serving you? Where do you need to, what part of you feels like you want to make things happen regarding your health, your work, and your routine? And what part of you feels like it's pumping the brakes? It wants more hard work. It wants more discipline in this area. So try to Try to focus on where you can still take action in a more disciplined, um, structured approach regarding your routines, your health, um, and your daily work sort of stuff. Now, Mars rules that seventh house of partnership and your second house of earned income. Saturn rules your fourth house of home and family and your fifth house of fun and pleasure. So again, where can you find balance between work, routines, and health in a way where you can maybe spend money on health or, um, but also balance it by, you know, having fun or balancing it with spending time at home versus time out in the world. So in terms of like the health of work and routine stuff, it looks like you also have to consider, you know, having fun is also part of your health. Health is not always a negative, you know, hard thing. You can seek health and health through positivity, through having more pleasure in your life. That's totally fine. You can also seek health and better routine by spending money on things. Like maybe like with the second house earned income, spending money. Um, maybe you hire a house cleaner or maybe you, you spend money on something so that you actually add more time and vitality to your health and your routines. So just keep that in mind. You know, health is not always the doctors is not always grueling, but for you with what it rules over, you know, consider incorporating more fun, considering more, um, time with home and family and consider, you know, if it's possible, where can you spend a little bit of money to, create more ease in your life or ease in your health and your routine. Then the following day on April 11th, Mercury goes Kissimmee in your Aries seventh house of partnership. Now Mercury rules your 12th house of subconscious and that ninth house of travel, higher education, spirituality, and religion. Ultimately, this Mercury Kissimmee is this like aha moment involving a potential partnership or a current partnership and it's that it's that aha moment within that review and revise period so I think some of you might have clarity around what you believe what you need where you need to go what you need to do um, involving some idea of a partnership or a partnership and on April 17th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. Now, this conjunction is actually exact on April 20th, but I am actually preferring to 
tell people about it earlier because the applying part of it I think is more intense um, or felt strongly so I would say really the second half of April last week of April pay attention to your eighth house of sex death transformation um, assets investments taxes um, partners money if applicable this is you know Jupiter rules your third house of communication and it also rules your sixth house of work health and routine so what transformation is taking place involving literally a transformation or involving you know an asset an investment partners money if applicable where it has a direct effect on your immediate environment your routines your health and your work and this is kind of this is like an expansive um situation playing out you know jupiter is very abundant and expansive and uranus is sort of like the um the the innovator the rebel um you know expect the unexpected and it's sort of expanding that in that eighth house area so some of you could see some sudden expansion or some um ex sudden expansion with you know a resource or a partner's resource this month or a sudden expansion involving a, a transformational situation like you know eighth house is like psychotherapy as well um so this could be like an internal expansion taking place that has a direct effect on you know your immediate environment your routines your health but jupiter is a benefic so i think this is going to be more of a positive situation playing out and keep in mind if you listen to the intro you know jupiter and venus are going to be will have been well were at this point in mutual reception so there was some resources there was some opportunity coming in and now things are sort of uh, maybe expanding or taking off at this point towards the end of april now also venus will be conjunct the north node in your seventh house of partnership and venus rules over that jupiter uranus conjunction in your eighth where you could see some sudden expansion around sex death transformation partners resources investments assets any of that um so that venus conjunct north node in that seventh house is another signifier of you know partnership being um more of a central theme in your life and venus conjunct the north node venus rules you so it's literally like you increasing partnership or moving towards partnership and then that conjunction in your eighth like what's suddenly changing what's suddenly transforming what is metaphorically dying or transforming or it could be literal i mean anyone could die at any time um but what is what is suddenly change changing what is suddenly liberating that allows you to move more towards partnership or the idea of partnership then we're really i mean we're really ending the month with you know mercury conjunct the north node going direct finally april 25th so april 25th we finally have that forward movement that feels very faded, feels very pulled. I mean, again, it's happening in the seventh house of partnership, but Mercury rules that 12th house of subconscious, ninth house of higher education, beliefs, travel. So I think there could be a lot more forward movement around um, not only the partnership, but more of like your mentality around it, your subconscious around it, your beliefs involving it. And you could really just, you know, be ready to move on from that and what's really lovely at the end of the month specifically on april 30th we're really ending the month with mars entering its home sign of aries your seventh house of marriage and partnership and venus entering its home sign of taurus your eighth house of sex death transformation 
partners' resources, other people's resources, investments, assets. So we're kind of going through the month. Again, if you listen to the intro, you'll understand like there's a lot of change and initiation sort of coming about this month that requires us to maybe take a different route or a different way or a different perspective that might feel unfamiliar to a lot of us. But ultimately, it's to create more strength and stability in our lives. And for you, it's really involving the angular houses. So it's not just your partnerships. It's how can you create change and shifts and um, in a way where you can create more strength and stability within yourself, within your partnerships, within your career, and within your home and family. And with, you know, Venus and Mars entering their home sign, I think in terms of taking action and what we love and value, I think that unfamiliar, you know, newness and initiation that we're all taking and for you specifically, those angular houses, those major areas of life feels quite unfamiliar, but we're really ending the month with what seems like it's how we take action and what we love and value is now becoming more familiar. Hello, Scorpio rising. On April 1st, Mercury will go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries, which is your sixth house of daily work, daily routines, and health. It also rules pets and coworkers. So anything that has come up or comes up within those areas, I would pay close attention to. Now, what's interesting as this Mercury retrograde takes place is there will be a Venus-Neptune conjunction in Pisces at 27 degrees. So this conjunction is taking place in the fifth house of fun, pleasure, creativity, children, if applicable, romance, and dating, if applicable. So What's interesting is that this Mercury-Venus-Neptune conjunction will be semi-sextile. And all you need to know about a semi-sextile is it's a minor aspect that can kind of signify like two completely different areas that don't have much in common. It's kind of like two roommates comfortably coexisting with one another, but they live entirely different lives that don't overlap. And so to me, when I look at that, I, I, I look at it in terms, like if I'm looking at a client's chart, it's sort of like there's going to be two entirely different situations playing out where one might feel pulled in, you know, totally different ends of the spectrum. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just kind of something that is like internalized or kind of playing out in the background. So for you, Scorpio rising... You're really starting off the month reviewing and revising the the work, the health, the routine, the coworker, the pet situation, and simultaneously feeling pulled towards maybe wanting to have more fun, wanting to escape and have more fun, wanting to spend more time with your children, wanting to date or focus more on romance. Um, and the Venus-Neptune conjunction is sort of like you, you're going to you're going to want to escape into that. So it's sort of like a part of you is going to be like, I need to work out and I need to work and I need to stay on my routine and, you know, do take care of like, you know, all the, the six is like, you know, the, uh, the to-do list. And the fifth is like, let's, let's have fun. Screw it. Um, and so you're going to you're going to probably go into April feeling like I really really want to escape. I really just want to go have fun or I really want to spend time with my kids or I want to date or you know but then it's like oh, I got to work and I got to do the the daily grind and you know do all this stuff. So just it, it's neither good nor bad. It's just go into April trying to balance those two areas um if you want to escape into that fifth house area totally fine you know just you know in in reference to the six pencil it in 
pencil it into the schedule. Um, don't feel guilty about it. Just find a way to work around it, you know? Now on April 5th, Venus enters your Aries sixth house of daily work, daily health, routines, co-workers, pets. Venus in Aries is very interesting because Venus in Aries wants what it wants and is going to go after it. Um, it's going to, th- Venus in Aries is going to think less about what other people want for you and more of what you want for you. So this is going to show up with the routines, the health. So I think some of you might be like, I really want to focus on myself. I really want to focus on getting stuff done. I want to focus on my health and wellness routine, you know, really, you know, strengthening my health and, you know, you're going to be thinking about, I hope thinking about it in a way where you're like, this is what works for me. Like it's, I can't worry about everyone else, you know? Now on April 5th, the North node will also go conjunct the sun in Aries. This is going to supercharge that area. The sun is exalted in Aries and it's conjunct the North node, which is like increase fate, you know, all that stuff. So you're going to be, I think you're going to be super pulled to, you know, your daily work routines, your other routines, your health, you know, um, mingling with coworkers, that sun rules your 10th house of career and public image. So I think work and routine stuff is going to be heavily emphasized in addition to finding time to work on your health, maybe fitness, wellness, whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, I think you're going to be super bold in that area. And then a few days later, on April 8th, that new moon solar eclipse comes into this area of the 6th, work, health, routine stuff. And it's sort of this like supercharged new beginning around your health, your work, your routine. Um, again, this is happening at 19 degrees. So if you have any placements, give or take, like roughly around that point, um, that will heavily influence it however the new moon solar eclipse is going to be conjunct chiron so chiron is very misunderstood um but chiron was one of the greatest healers and so as this new beginning whatever whatever new beginning you're initiating in this area around you know your work your routines your health your co-workers your pets You know, some of you quite literally might be like getting new pets or thinking about getting a new pet or some situations playing out with a pet. Um, So it could be something more mundane or or superficial, I guess. Um, Like not superficial, but just like, you know, not so um, more just literal, I guess. Um, And so... I think, you know, with it being conjunct Chiron, like, where can you heal parts of yourself in order to initiate this new routine or this new change or, you know, new ways around your health and your wellness and relationships with coworkers or pets? So I actually think that this could be really beneficial. And, yeah, I... I like this um, energy for a lot of, I mean, it depends on your personal placements, but I like this new initiating energy for more strength and stability, especially in the sixth house, because if you're going to strengthen your six, it's trying the second and the 10th. So it's sort of like, I look at it like you strengthen your six, you strengthen your money and you strengthen your career and your business. So kudos to you. And then a few days later on April 10th, Mars will be conjunct Saturn in your Pisces fifth. So this is going to shift sort of, I mean, Mars rules your sixth house of daily work, daily health, routine, coworkers, pets. And Saturn rules your third house of siblings, extended family, sort of daily environment, fourth house of home and family. So if you have children, I would pay very close attention to this. Or, um, yeah, I would say children would probably influence this 
more heavily. Um, what Mars is sort of like, I want to take action and Saturn's like, slow down. However, it's in Pisces, which is sort of, in my opinion, going to mitigate the elemental makeup of these planets. So I think it could be more positive. Um, but I would contemplate like, what change, what did you initiate with work, routine, health, pets, all this, that has a direct influence on your children, on your home and family, uh, relationship with your media environment. So I would contemplate that and in a way where it's like, okay, where can I, where can I move forward and where do I need to still kind of pump the brakes and think this through. So maybe you're initiating a new health routine. Maybe you're, you know, I don't know, six house pets. Maybe you're getting a new pet and you're contemplating, how are my children going to help? How is this going to affect home and family? How is this going to affect my immediate environment? New health routine. How is it going to affect my kids? How is it going to affect my home and family environment? How can I implement this routine with everyone else that I live with? Um, again, I'm just tossing it out there for what I see generally, but again, please apply this to your personal chart. It will tell you more details about what is really going on and what is influencing and playing out. Now, let's see. The next day is interesting because on April 11th, Mercury will go Kasimi in your Aries 6. So it looks like as you're sort of seeing where you can take action, where you still need to pump the brakes, home and family situation, immediate environment, what's going on with work, routines, how is it all influencing. The following day, Mercury's still retrograde, but Mercury goes Kissimmee, which means it's in the heart of the sun. And we get a few hours on April 11th where the aha moment, the moment of clarity sets in. And so... This is, this is interesting because, I mean, it is happening in the, the routines, the health, the, the daily work, the pets, the co-workers. However, Mercury rules the 11th and the 8th. So I would consider whatever clarity you get, how does it affect your ability to transform and to achieve your long-term goals? So in terms of your work, coworkers, routines, health, pet, not only any of those areas affecting home, family, children on the table, but also what clarity are you potentially going to get on the 11th that allows you to see ultimately how this is playing a part in your long-term goals and in any transformation you're seeking in your life. Then on April 17th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. Now this conjunction is actually exact on April 20th, but I want to talk about it earlier because usually the applying, you know, close applying aspect is felt by people um, more so. So again, exact on April 20th, but I honestly think that we're going to be feeling this really the second half of April, last week of April or so. And for you, this is happening in the seventh house of marriage, partnership and business partnership. So this is interesting because Jupiter rules your second house of earned income, material possessions and self-worth, and also your fifth house of children, creativity, fun, pleasure, romance, and dating. So whether you're single or coupled up, I think partnership or dating could be a theme that um, gets amplified or expanded more so around this time. But if you are, well, no, even if you're still single, I think you're going to be considering, you know, um, a money situation, material possession, self-worth in regards to your relationship, your partnership, your marriage, your business partnership. And, you know, also, I would say if you're single, 
consider your self-worth, consider um, your self-expression, um, consider, you know, maybe having a more intentional approach with dating. If you're coupled up I or married or in a business partnership, I would consider a money situation, your resources, and how that um, is integrated within the marriage or helping your partner, assisting your partner, um, especially with that Mercury retrograde ruling the 8th, which is like your partner's resources. So I think like money and resources could be a topic for some time um, with this conjunction happening. Also keep in mind on April 17th, Venus is going to go conjunct the North Node in your 6th house. So Venus rules over your 7th house of partnership and your 12th house of the subconscious. So again, I think whether you're single or partnered up, you know, you're still going to be heavily focused on your mind and your body. And maybe some of you are going to be heavily focused on taking care of your mind and your body, you know, your mental health, your physical health, how that allows you to show up in, in work, in partnership, and home, family, your ability to, you know, create more wealth, create more resources when your, your mind and your body are balanced, you know, you have a lot more energy and vitality to achieve a lot of areas, other areas of life. So that's going to simultaneously be going on. And then we're really ending the month, you know, April 25th, Mercury finally goes conjunct the North Node and goes direct in that sixth house of work, health, routine, coworkers, and pets. So whatever you were reviewing and revising, um, thinking about long-term goals, thinking about your partner's resources, money, transformation, um, you're going to see more forward movement in this area and have more of a green light, maybe focusing more on what routines actually work for you, what wellness works for you, what you know, work routine works for you and how that directly impacts your immediate environment, how your long-term goals, what you want to transform in your life. So I see a lot of Scorpio risings like on a very general, like a extremely generalized um, level, really like your success lies in your health and your routines and really anchoring yourself in that where you can balance your mental and your physical in order to show up in all these other areas of your life is going to be really, really potent for a lot of you. And on April 30th, Mars will have entered its home sign of Aries, which is that sixth house of health, work, um, routine, coworkers, pets. Uh, Mars also rules you, your body, yourself. So as Mercury's moving forward, you're having more forward movement in this area. Mars comes in and taking action in this area feels more familiar. It will probably be easier compared to the past month or two um, where we've had to initiate change and deal with things, but in, you know, in more unfamiliar ways. Uh, Mars and Pisces, we kind of had to find new ways or unfamiliar ways to go after what is necessary or what we want. And now we're ending the month with Mars moving into an area where I think you're going to have an easier time taking action around your health, your work, your routines, your coworkers, pets. And simultaneously, Venus will have moved into its home sign of Taurus, which is the seventh house of marriage and partnership. And so there will be, you know, more familiarity around what you love and value, 
um, Venus will be home. It, it, it will just be more of a familiar feeling as we get to the end of the month around how we take action and what we love and value. Hello, Sagittarius rising. On April 1st, it looks like Mercury is going to go retrograde in your Aries fifth house of children and dating, if applicable. Pleasure, fun, really just the fun house, the create creativity, self-expression. But if you have children or you are dating or seeking romance, um, I would pay close attention to this um, because Mercury rules your seventh house of marriage, partnership, business partnership, and also your career and public image. So there could be some period going into April, this review and revise period around that's maybe involving a partnership, a marriage, a business partnership, and your business, your career, and or your public image that could be affecting, you know, your ability to have fun or, um, you know, it might be affecting your children or your dating life, your romantic life, or just generally just, you know, like having fun in your creative self-expression. But what's interesting about this is Venus will be conjunct Neptune in your Pisces fourth house of home and family. So I'm seeing sort of overlapping themes here that could potentially come up. But basically, you know, Venus conjunct Neptune semi-sextile this Mercury retrograde. What you need to know about the semi-sextile is that it is a minor aspect and it can indicate, it's sort of like the analogy I give is like two roommates living together that have nothing in common, but they, they coexist, they comfortably live together, but their lives just really don't overlap. And so when looking at a chart, it's sort of like a part of you may feel like you really want to focus on home and family, property, real estate, or just escape with family and, you know, just sort of like be in your own little world or escape certain things with your family or at home. And then the other part of you is going to be you know, pulled maybe in a different direction, especially with maybe a partnership or career and contemplating, okay, how do I incorporate more fun, more pleasure, the ability to date if applicable, the ability to maybe spend more time with my children if applicable. So you might feel pulled in two different areas of life and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I would just, you know, try to try to have that perspective going into April where you might have to attend to the partnership, the children, the career. And then a part of you is like, well, okay, I have to attend to these things, but I also really just want to be at home or focus on home and family and just sort of like enjoying myself and escaping and just, you know, doing my own thing with them or with myself at home. So you can balance that if you feel pulled in those in two different directions or those two different areas, just, you know, try to try to work with it. Um, understand that the, the Mercury retrograde aspect of it is getting you to review and revise um, so that maybe you can hopefully incorporate more fun or time with your children or time for dating. Again, if applicable, creativity, self-expression by looking at your work, looking at your work situation, your business situation, and also like a partnership or marriage situation playing out. Now on April 5th, Venus will then enter Aries. Now Venus going into Aries is a different kind of Venus. It's a Venus that, you know, wants what it wants and, um, is going to go about it in maybe a different way, using different resources. So Venus rules your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. And it also rules your 6th house of work, health, and daily routines. Also pets and coworkers. So you might, you know, Venus going into your 5th house, again on April 5th, that north node conjunct the sun will also be happening in your 5th house. 
Um, there's going to be a lot of pull towards this fifth house of fun, pleasure, creativity, children, dating, again, if applicable. Now, I think a couple things are going to play out with this. I think you're going to be pulled in the direction of those themes, but in a way that feels different, um, or unusual. And the sun being here, ruling your ninth house of higher education, spirituality, religion, travel, you know, there could also be maybe elements where you find learning or traveling or, again, unusual unusual things to you, um, more pleasurable, more fun. So there's a plethora of things on the table, especially with the fifth house of fun because Every person considers so many different things fun, and that is such a subjective experience. So I really invite you to consider these transits and really apply them to your own individual chart to get a clear picture of what is truly influencing your chart in a very specific way. On April 8th, we finally have that new moon solar eclipse in Aries. Again, this is your fifth house, fun, creativity, pleasure, romance, um, children, dating, if applicable. And this is really a new, a new moon is like a new beginning, a new start on steroids. If you have anything around 19 degrees Aries, this is definitely going to be integrated within that and flavor that in a particular way. And so this is really like a new beginning a new chapter with your children or approach to dating or romance or creativity, fun, pleasure, etc. Fifth house is like the good things, <laughs> the fun things. And this is this is a great new beginning here, but with everything else going on, you know, Mercury's still retrograde. There's, there's other things you're considering. There's other things you're reviewing and revising as this is simultaneously going on. So this new beginning, this new start might feel, especially with Venus here, it's like if you listen to the intro, it will make more sense where we're starting something, we're initiating something. And for you, it's, it's great. It's in the fifth house of fun. Um, but it, you know, it might feel, it might feel quite literally feel new or uncharted territory or, you know, a different approach or a different change. Um, so this is going to be really interesting, especially because it's fifth house theme. So it would be very interesting to see how a lot of Sag, Sagittarius risings like yourselves are, are looking at this area differently and how it might affect, you know, the career or the partnership and the stuff going on with home and family. So very, very interesting. Now on April 10th, Mars goes conjunct Saturn in your Pisces fourth house of home and family. Mars rules over that fifth house of fun, creativity, pleasure, children, dating. So if you have children, you're single, you're dating, um, this could play out in a different way. But I think ultimately, you know, Mars conjunct Saturn, where where do you want to take action around home, family, property, real estate, and where do you still want to maybe pump the brakes? And, you know, Mars conjunct Saturn, you look it up on the internet, you're just going to see terrible things. What it's not, what the information is not considering is the elemental makeup and the fact that it's in Pisces, which is a water sign. And I think Pisces in many ways can help mitigate the properties of Mars and Saturn. So it's actually like what I like about these eclipses is there's there's opportunities, there's resources, and there's mitigating factors that make it more positive for a lot of us. Now, again, it depends on your personal placements. So I think there's definitely going to be some home, family, property, real estate stuff coming up, but 
in a way where you're able to see what you need to take action on and simultaneously see what you still need to work on. Then the following day on April 11th, there will be the Mercury Kissimmee in your Aries fifth house. So Mercury will have been retrograde, you're reviewing, you're revising, how you have fun, your career, your partnerships. And then Mercury Kissimmee is when Mercury's in the heart of the sun. So it's this it's a few hours on April 11th where we sort of have a higher probability of clarity. There is this aha moment, a sense of clarity around what is going on, where, what's the next steps, and you sort of see the whole picture just more clearly. And it makes it a little bit easier to see, okay, this is what's unfolding. This is what I need to work with, especially with all this cardinal stuff starting to amp up where things are starting, things are changing, things are initiating. I think for the positive, I think it's changed to get us to more stability, more strength, um, set us in a new direction that is better and stronger. And the Mercury Kissimmee in Aries, again, a cardinal sign, I think is the clarity around that, clarity around that initiation, the change, the beginning. And then April 17th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. Now, this conjunction will actually be exact on April 20th, but I wanted to talk about it a few days before because it's often felt um, with that applying, you know, a couple days before where the the planet's sort of applying to the other. Um, But I think a lot of us might feel this the second half of April, maybe the last week of April. And so this is happening in your sixth house of work health, routine, pets, co-workers. So Uranus is sort of like the awakener. It's sudden. It's the rebel. It's the innovator. And Jupiter wants to expand and have abundance. And Jupiter rules your fourth house of home and family. It also rules you, yourself, the body. So I definitely think there can be sort of maybe sudden expansion around the health, the work, and the routines, a sudden shift in routine um, where it's for the better. It has, you know, a more benefic, again, Jupiter is like your ruling planet as a Sagittarius rising. So this is, this, this conjunction is pretty important for Sag risings and Pisces risings. But this happening in the six is like, There could be a sudden opportunity for health, a sudden opportunity at work, a sudden shift in routine that puts you in a better routine or, you know, just better overall. So I would definitely, and you know, Jupiter ruling the fourth house of home and family as well. This could be a sudden situation playing out with home, family, property, real estate that shifts your routine, your health, you know, for the better. I mean, Jupiter is the greater benefic. Um, it is your your ruling planet as a Sag rising. It rules over your body, right? First house, body, self. So I definitely think this could be an opportunistic time around like health, wellness, routines, but in a sudden way where it's sort of like, oh, okay, here it is. And the same day on April 17th, Venus will be conjunct the North Node in that fifth house of creativity, self-expression, pleasure, fun, again, children and dating if applicable. So Venus rules over that sixth house of health, work and routine. It also rules over your 11th house of friends and long-term goals So this is sort of tying in these two areas where you could very well have a change in work, a health routine that, I mean, Jupiter, good fortune, abundance, um, could definitely work in your favor, work for the better. 
where you're maybe able to step into incorporating more fun, more, yeah, more fun, creativity, self-expression within that routine, within your health. So it seems like fifth and sixth house themes are kind of tying into each other uh, with Venus ruling over that sixth house with that other conjunction going on. Um, so it looks like there, yeah, there's overlapping themes with 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 houses that are very very interesting as we get towards the end of April and then April 25th Mercury again your fifth house is like on fire this month um April 25th Mercury goes conjunct the north node at 15 degrees in Aries and goes direct so there will be I think okay we've had a month of reviewing and revising the work, the career, the business, the partnerships, the marriage, the home and family, you know, approach to fun. What is fun? What do I want? You know, how can I incorporate more fun into my routine, into my health? Um, and then that, like I said, April 25th, Mercury conjunct the North Node. This is significant because the North Node is is fate. It's... Um, Mercury doesn't go conjunct the North Node a lot. If it's, it's more, it's more rare that it does, um, and so I think this is significant because it's going to not only be that direct forward movement, but the North Node is going to increase it, is going to magnify it. And so I think there will be a lot of forward movement around the career, the business, the, the partnership, the marriage, um, in a way where you can sort of take action and, and, and start moving forward regarding, you know, okay, I've got the career figured out, got the partnership figured out. Now, how can I incorporate more fun, more time with my children or time for dating or romance or creativity, self-expression? Um, so... I, I kind of see April as Sag Risings are really dealing with maybe some home and family stuff, maybe some children or dating stuff, getting, you know, the health, the work, the routine stuff in order, maybe some partnership um, stuff being incorporated within that, ultimately to find more time to be with your kids or more time to create or have fun. So I think this is really, really great. I mean, fifth house is great. Again, it depends on your personal placements. Please, please, please apply this to your own chart. Again, you can always book a one-on-one -on -one with me where we can get into this. But I really like the end of April, not only because we have the Mercury Direct with the North Node, we're kind of moving past that Jupiter Uranus conjunction, the Mars Saturn conjunction. And we sort of end the month where Mars is entering its home sign of Aries, fifth house, fun, pleasure. And Venus is entering its home sign, Taurus, sixth house, health, work, routine, pets, co workers. And so, really, we've had a month where maybe we've had to initiate or you know, change or start new, but how we're doing it may feel unfamiliar or we have to find alternative ways to to take the opportunities or to go after it. And the month is closing with not only direct movement, but ultimately the planet where that represents how we take action and the planet of what we love and value are in their home signs. So how we take action and what we love and value in addition to the direct movement will feel more familiar and at home. Hello Capricorn Risings. On April 1st, Mercury goes retrograde 27 degrees Aries in your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. Now, Mercury rules your sixth house of daily routines, health, sort of your daily work, your coworkers, your pets, and it also rules your ninth house of higher education, 
spirituality, religion, and travel. So something could be going on at home where you are going through a review and revise period involving home, family, property, and real estate where it could affect your routine. It could affect your work. Um, It could definitely have you thinking about maybe like trying to educate yourself in this revisionary period or, um, you know, seek spirituality, religion, wisdom to sort of like work through whatever's going on with home and family. So say there's something with a family member or, um, you know, yeah, something's going on with a family member and you're maybe praying or seeking your your spirituality and your religion to create more groundedness in the home. Or maybe there's a property and real estate situation that um, is taking up your time or affecting your routine and you seek more education or more knowledge to sort of mitigate or work through whatever it is. Either way, I would definitely expect some some delay or slow down, review, revise period involving the fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. And what's interesting is Venus will be conjunct Neptune in your third house of siblings, extended family, sort of your neighborhood, like your immediate environment. And the Venus-Neptune conjunction is going to be semi-sextile the Mercury retrograde in your fourth house of home and family. So all you need to know about the semi-sextile is that it's a minor aspect and it can kind of indicate that it's sort of like two roommates who coexist with each other, but they live totally different lives. And so when I see it, it kind of, it starts to come, it usually comes up in my clients' lives as like, I'm really pulled in this direction and I'm also really pulled in this direction and these two places on the spectrum like really don't overlap and it's it it can kind of make it harder to integrate those both area both of those areas within your day-to-day life so there could be and Venus Neptune is like escape energy you kind of want to like escape so whatever, whatever's going on, you might want to spend time with extended family or siblings or be out and about in your neighborhood or, you know, you know, friend, not friends, it's more 11th house, but um, more out in your community, communicating as a way to maybe process or um, escape whatever it is that is, you know, going on at home or has you reviewing and revising during this period whether it's positive or negative again this is not all negative it could be a good thing that's coming about in the home family property and real estate but it's requiring time or effort and um, a part of you is going to want to maybe just be with family and siblings and talk and communicate and you know let the other situation uh, play out but either way if you feel sort of going into April feeling like there's these two different areas of your life where you're like I really want to go here but I also really need to take care of this don't be surprised it's just a season it will pass Uh, the mercury retrograde is just getting getting you to look at your routines your health uh, your work and sort of your wisdom your your beliefs your higher knowledge and um, how to review and revise that in a way where it creates um, a better environment or, um, you know, maybe more support or ease with the home family property real estate going on. Then on April 5th, Venus enters your Aries fourth house of home and family. Now we have the career coming into play and uh, the children coming into play, if that's applicable. Or, you know, your creativity, your fun, your self-expression also on the table coming into this. So this is where I think Venus is going to come in and it might give you the extra judge of knowing what you want and, and knowing, you know, what you need to do around what you love and value pertaining to home, family, property, and real estate in order to make it happen. Um, In all honesty, 
in terms of a general horoscope for Capricorn rising, Venus ruling the 10th opposite the 4th. I mean, th- I think this is where, okay, how do I balance what's going on at home with work? Basically, that's how I see it. Um, if you have children with the 5th, like Venus ruling the 5th, um, I would definitely say, okay, now how do I, this is a clear indicator of how do I balance what's going on in the home? I'm reviewing and revising something at home um, and trying to get my routine in order, you know, in order to do it. And now I need to figure out, okay, what about my work? How do I balance my work with the home and family and also the children? Um, if you don't have children and it's just sim- simply like your y- how you have fun and your creative self-expression, um, this is definitely just going to be like, okay, something something's going on. I got to figure out how to balance the work uh, with it and also really try to figure out how to also implement time for my creative self-expression and and having fun and enjoying life also keep in mind on april 5th the north node will be conjunct the sun in your aries fourth house of home and family now the sun is exalted in aries so it's very well resourced it's conjunct the north node which is a point of increase um, definitely pulling you in the direction of home family property and real estate The sun rules your eighth house of sex, death, transformation, investments, assets, loans. So whenever I see a fourth house and an eighth house connection in a really strong way like this one, I instantly think, what's going on with renovations? What's going on with, you know, property, real estate? Where are you looking into your investments in order to deal with a home and family problem? Where are you looking to maybe invest in property? or sell a property um you know there's the the home the family the the money um situation is sort of playing out so it's either something's playing out with a home or family member and you're you're looking into what you need to transform um maybe looking at a partner's resources maybe looking at an investment or an asset in order to um deal with the home family property real estate situation playing out so it looks like you know capricorn rising so far it looks like april is going to be a month where you're really you're 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 trying to get your affairs in order to initiate and start something new regarding home family property and real estate and lo and behold on april 8th you finally will have that new moon solar eclipse in your Aries fourth house of home family property real estate at 19 degrees so if you have anything roughly around 19 degrees in Aries especially um you you know you'll you'll probably feel this strongly um but it's basically it's a new beginning it's it's a it's a new beginning a fresh start a new initiation on steroids as they say you know, regarding home, family, property, and real estate. So like I said, you're going into April, it looks like you're trying to look at your, your routine, like what's what what's my work, you know, where are my investments um, regarding the home, family, property, real estate situation, maybe some stuff with some children, um, you know, getting, figuring that situation out as well, because that's obviously going to be a part of it if you have children. But then this this new beginning, comes along and it looks like for the most part you're you're able to figure out that fresh start that new story initiating that that change that is necessary that is needed again if you listen to the intro you'll start to kind of have those contextual clues as to what has played out the past six months where you can now clearly see the what you need to initiate what you need to change to create more stability um, and strength regarding home, family, property, and real estate. Then on April 10th, there will be a Mars-Saturn conjunction in your Pisces third house of extended family, siblings, neighborhood, really your immediate environment. I'm not too wor- I mean, if this was happening in a totally different sign, I'd, I'd, I'd feel different about it. But 
in Pisces, I feel like Pisces as the water sign, it has sort of like mitigating factors to um, Mars and Saturn's elemental makeup as is dry. So I think, I don't think this is going to be that much. It's worth noting though. So whatever's going on, you might feel, you know, you might feel that there's something else going on with extended family or siblings or your need to communicate um, what's going on. Maybe a part of you wants to communicate and then a part of you may not. So Mars wants to go, Saturn wants to pump the brakes. So a part of you, you know, maybe you'll, you'll find a way to um, communicate effectively. Maybe, maybe extended family and siblings... Um, could be a part of this, play a part in this, maybe be supportive roles in this, and you have to find a way to communicate your needs around that. But again, I need to see your individual chart or take this and apply it to your own chart if you have knowledge of your own chart. The next day on April 11th, there is the Mercury Cassini in Aries. So again, this um, Mercury is in the heart of the sun. You're still in this review and revise period, but when Mercury goes into the heart of the sun for a few hours on April 11th, sort of like this moment of clarity. It's this aha moment regarding home, family, property, and real estate. And again, Mercury also rules your six. So daily work, daily routines, daily health stuff, and also your ninth house of beliefs, spirituality, knowledge. It's all kind of like, I think at this, that April 11th point, I think it might all kind of come into vision, become clear on next steps, what you need to do, you know, reviewing, revising, getting your ducks in a row, sort, you know, so to speak. So I like that. Um, I think that will be the moment where you're like, okay, I know what I need to do and I, I see the path more clearly. Then on April 17th, Jupiter will be conjunct Uranus. Now this conjunction is actually exact on April 20th, but I like to give a few days earlier um, because I think I think a lot of us are going to be feeling this early, maybe mid-April um, through the remainder of April. So this is happening in your fifth house of children, dating, creativity, fun, pleasure, romance, self-expression. So if dating's applicable, fine. If children are aff- applicable, fine. Fun, pleasure, whatever it may be, whatever, whatever resonates with you. Again, I don't have your personal chart, so we'll have to use general themes. Um, but... I think this conjunction happening in the fifth, Jupiter rules your 12th house of subconscious and also rules your third house of, you know, neighborhoods, siblings, extended family coming together in the fifth. If you have children, this seems like a clear indicator of like maybe sudden, sudden um, support from siblings or extended family for your children that has like a subconscious effect on you. Um, or if this is interesting now that I look at it, this is really interesting. It seems like there's a sudden situation that's abundant and expansive happening involving like creativity and self-expression, uh, maybe with dating or children or romance that has a subconscious effect on you and also has an effect on your immediate environment. So this, yeah, now that I look at it, I'm like, wow, this is, I would love to like see this in individual charts. I need to look at Capricorn rising charts. Um, Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. So this looks very interesting. It looks like whatever plays out where after you have this aha moment, you could have something happen again in those in, in the fifth house themes that has an immediate effect on your subconscious, an immediate effect on your immediate sort of surroundings, your day to day environment. Additionally, on the 17th, Venus will go conjunct the North Node in your fourth house of home and family. 
Venus rules over that fifth house area. It also rules over your 10th house of career and public image. So this is really not only pulling you towards home, family, property, and real estate, but Venus rules over your career, your business, your your public image, and your fifth house of creativity and self-expression. So maybe you're working from home. Maybe you're moving towards like property and real estate as a means, as, as a business or a public image. Or uh, maybe you're looking to work from home more. Or maybe you are being like adding more self-expression and creativity into what you do whether it's your career or your side hustle situation um very very interesting but ultimately that north node is really pulling you towards a home family property real estate for some time now on april 25th finally mercury goes conjunct that north node in your fourth house of home property home family property real estate and it will go direct so finally you have the green light things are moving forward in home family property real estate moving forward with health routines daily work you know beliefs knowledge all that stuff Um, there's more forward movement going in that area after some time you know quite a few weeks of trying to initiate change and start start things new with these eclipses but in ways where it felt new it felt like taking action on it might require a different technique or an unfamiliar way and now we're closing out the month with more direct movement in all of those areas um, after some clarity you know so I really really like this for you Capricorn Risings and What's even better is not only are we getting the direct movement, but Mars will enter its home sign of Aries, again, your fourth house of home and family, and Venus is going to enter your Taurus fifth house of children, dating, creativity, romance, self-expression, really the fun, the fun stuff. And so both of these planets, with all of this direct movement, it just looks like what we love and value and how we take action looks like it's going to become a lot more familiar for you pertaining to home family property and real estate and also your creativity your self-expression your children romance dating all the good stuff in life so I think towards the end of the month you're going to have not only some clarity and some forward movement but that action And what you love and value will feel more, maybe more settled and um, more familiar as you move forward. Hello, Aquarius Risings. On April 1st, Mercury will go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. So this is happening in your third house of communication, siblings, extended family, really your immediate day-to-day environment. Now, Mercury rules your fifth house in your eighth house. So this immediately, how I think this sort of congeals, as I say, um, you know, where can you incorporate more fun, more pleasure, more creativity and self-expression in your immediate environment? Where can you maybe have more fun and pleasure with your siblings and your extended family? And in a way where maybe, you know, with the eighth house ties, where it could be transformational, it could be, um, you know, I just see like, where can you add more creativity and have more fun in your day-to-day environment, siblings, extended family, where you can see more transformation take place. And what's interesting is the Venus Neptune conjunction happening the same day. So it's sort of like as you review and revise the, you know, your communication, your siblings, your extended family, in a way where maybe you're trying to incorporate more fun in in that area of life and more transformation in that area of life. The Venus Neptune conjunction is in your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self worth. So it's sort of like there's a semi-sextile going on 
And semi-sextiles are a minor aspect where it's sort of like the analogy I give is two roommates who uh, comfortably coexist, but they don't have anything in common. Their lives don't overlap. And so it's sort of like your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth is going to be on one end of the spectrum. And your third house of communication, siblings, extended family, and immediate environment is going to be on the other end of the spectrum. Now, the Venus-Neptune is sort of escape energy. So where you're going to want to escape is maybe like self-care and self-worth and material possessions and focusing on, you know, your resources and your earned income. But the, the Mercury retrograde in the North Node is going to be pulling you towards communicating and siblings and extended family and sort of reviewing and revising how you have fun and what's your idea of pleasure and, you know, maybe transforming those areas of life as well. And so if you go into this month sort of feeling like, man, I'm, I, I feel like I'm, my, I'm pulled in two different directions and they don't sort of thread together in some weird way, you know, it, it, it's a season. It will pass. Um, it won't last long. I just say it as we're entering the month and, and how it's sort of happening with this Mercury retrograde. It can make it feel sort of like, oh, what, what is going on here? Um, but like I said, it will pass. Um, just try to do your best to focus on self-care and focus on your self-worth. But also, you will likely have to focus on your immediate environment stuff and your communication and, you know, all the other stuff I mentioned. Now, a few days later on April 5th, Venus will then enter your Aries third house of communication siblings extended family now what's interesting about this Venus rules your fourth house of home and family and your ninth house of knowledge higher education spirituality really wisdom travel stuff like that so some of you might be traveling or taking like short distance trips at this time but I think with Venus entering Aries Venus is Venus in Aries is peculiar because um, Venus is more likely to want what Venus wants and um, go after it. Now, if you have siblings and extended family and things going on, especially with Venus ruling the fourth house of home and family, there's more, it's, it's, it's more likely this is going to be the family theme. Um, where you might be communicating or interacting in ways where you are communicating your needs or getting your needs. And um, Venus and Aries is less less likely to be like, well, you know, wh- what do you want to do? What, what What is it? It's v- Venus and Aries, like Venus has its agenda and you know, knows what it wants, essentially. And so going into April, I would say, what is it that you really want involving your communication, your relationships with, you know, family, siblings? What is it that you really want out of home, family, property, and real estate? And more importantly, what is it that you really want in terms of, you know, your ability to learn, ability to expand your wisdom, your spirituality, and be able to travel. Um, So those are areas with Venus and Aries. What is it that you really desire with that? And how can you, how can you do it in a way where, you know, with the Aries Libra access, do it in a way where you, you hold your identity, and you're able to stand up and go after it, but not at the detriment of your relationships. So additionally, on the fifth, the north node will be conjunct the sun in Aries. And so this is more pull towards that immediate environment, siblings, extended family. But what's interesting, not only is the sun exalted in Aries and very well resourced and very pretty happy here, the sun rules your seventh house of marriage, long term partnerships and business partnerships. So if you are partnered up, if you are married, Um, or you have business partnerships, I would pay particularly close attention to this um, because this is really going to pull in that partner. It's going to pull in that partnership 
regarding the situation playing out in the beginning of April. Then a few days later, on April 8th, there will then be the new moon solar eclipse in your Aries third house of communication, siblings, extended family, like I said, your immediate environment. This is a new beginning, a new chapter being initiated. Again, cardinal signs love initiating, they love starting. So um, I think this will be welcomed on many levels. But think about everything that's played out in March, even in the very beginning of April. Now we're April 8th. What is, what, what is now starting with your immediate environment, your extended family, your siblings? In a way, I mean, if you think about like new moon, new moon is the sun and the moon together here. So the sun ruling partnership, marriage, The moon ruling your sixth house of work, health, routine. So what's going on in in the partnership arena? What's going on in the work, health, routine where it's now starting this new beginning? It's initiating this new start literally in your your immediate environment, maybe with siblings, maybe with extended family. Then on April 10th, just a few days later, there will be the Mars-Saturn conjunction in your Pisces second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So this area will definitely be highlighted, but the interesting thing about this is if you look up Mars-Saturn conjunction, you'll probably be horrified, but I don't think that's going to be the case here because it's not taking into account the planet's elemental makeup and it's not taking into account the sign that they're in which is Pisces and so if you look at sort of like Pisces as a water sign Saturn as you know cold and dry Mars hot and dry you put it in water sort of mitigates their properties and with these two planets sort of representing the malefics it's a good thing to mitigate their properties. Um, So I think this could actually, and even in a lot of the the ancient literature that I read, um, there was even indicators where this specific situation happening in Pisces or a water sign, um, not water sign, but Pisces in general, could have not only mitigating factors, but even positive factors. So I actually think that this could be, um, there may be some, some, I, I want to go, but then pumping up the brakes in the area of like money, resources, uh, self-worth. But I think all in all, I don't see it being as catastrophic as like a lot of people are saying, if you really take into that elemental makeup. So I'm not, I'm actually not too worried about that. Um, I mean, it will play a part. So again, pay attention to immediate environment, siblings. Mars Mars also rules your 10th house of career. And Saturn rules your subconscious, first house of self. So I definitely think you'll be thinking about money, thinking about resources in terms of your work, its effect on your subconscious, its effect on your physical body. Um, but there could be mitigating factors where it turns out more positively. Now, April 11th, there will be the Mercury Kissimmee in your Aries third house. So much third house going on this month. Communication, siblings, extended family, immediate environment. Now, this is the point in the retrograde where Mercury goes in the heart of the sun. So for a few hours on April 11th, you will likely experience moments of clarity around what is unfolding, particularly around your creativity, your self-expression, um, romance, um, you know, pleasure, having fun, and also your transformation, your partner's resources, if applicable, um, investments, assets, those types of things. So this could be the moment where, yes, you're re- reviewing and revising, but you gain clarity about maybe a money situation or a partner's money situation and clarity around how you can incorporate more pleasure and fun 
um, in this new chapter that's really starting involving your immediate environment, your third house. Now on April 17th, Jupiter goes conjunct Uranus. This this conjunction is actually exact on April 20th, but I think we're going to feel this beforehand. Um, at least from my experience, I, I notice people feel things when the planet's applying. Um, definitely when it's it's conjunct, but, it, you know, exact. But I want to give, I want to prepare all of you. Um The Jupiter-Uranus conjunction will be in your fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. Now, this is interesting because Jupiter rules your 11th house of friends, groups, communities, and long-term goals. And it also rules your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So some of you could suddenly renovate, sudden, you know, suddenly move, suddenly expand your home. What I like about this, um, specifically for Aquarius Risings, is a lot of you could get more resources, more expansion, more ability um, to, because of what Jupiter rules in your chart, to expand your community, to expand your long-term goals, um, could, you know, your earned income, your material possessions could play a part in this maybe sudden expansion around home, family, property, and real estate. So some of you could be renovating, redecorating, expanding, finding um, a, a new way, a new home, or a new way of living. So I would definitely, definitely definitely pay attention to home family property and real estate in April in particular on how it affects your community and your long-term goals and your income so if you are considering moving or purchasing real estate for you Aquarius risings I would definitely not only consider um, the money situation um, but I would highly consider is where you live supportive of what you want to do right the 11th house being tied in what are your hopes your dreams your goals and who you surround yourself with and with this really these two planets coming together this Jupiter Uranus is coming together here is like really a once in a lifetime situation so I think it's it's extra important to pay attention pay attention to um, particularly if you have any placements around 20 21 22 degrees of Taurus Aquarius Scorpio or Leo that will definitely be affected first and foremost I would say around 20 degrees of any sign, but in particular, Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo. Um, There could be a home and family property real estate situation where you're highly considering your career, your business, your public image involved in that. What needs to change around you, the self? What needs to be considered within the marriage, the partnership involved in that? But with Jupiter being tied into this and it's ruling your second and your 11th, I would highly consider, okay, how can I make my home more supportive of what I want to do, more supportive of my hopes, my dreams, right, 11th house, my goals? How can I um, live somewhere or renovate or create a home or have a home that helps me increase my material possessions, increase my earned income and my resources? So, there's definitely strong themes of home, family, property, and real estate for you this month where um, it could, because Uranus is involved, it could feel quite sudden. It could feel sudden, but it's not a bad thing, right? We're dealing with Jupiter and Jupiter ruling your second and your 11th. I think it's going to have a lot to do 
with your hopes, your dreams, surrounding yourself with the right people, aligning yourself to your goals, and ultimately to get, you know, the resources you need and align yourself to your self-worth. Now, additionally, on April 17th, Venus is going to go conjunct the North Node in your third house of communication, siblings, extended family, immediate environment. And Venus rules over that fourth house of home, family, property, and real estate. It also rules over your ninth house of higher education, beliefs, religion, spirituality, travel. So again, we're having additional themes of, you know, how, how can you really increase and move towards the immediate environment you need, the immediate environment that you love and value that you can call home, that, you know, Venus also ruling the ninth, how can you move towards an immediate environment or create an environment where you can continue to learn, to expand your knowledge, to teach, ninth house is teaching, um, to travel, to, you know, dive into more of your spirituality and religion. So I think overall for you, Aquarius Risings, it's a lot of definitely initiating and starting things new and, and, and change. Um, but ultimately, you know, considering how can I really align myself to what's true to me and how can I create a home, family, sort of immediate environment um, that supports my goals and my my knowledge and my resources. Now on April 25th, finally, Mercury goes direct conjunct the North Node. This is this is very important because this is that forward movement. This is that green light especially because it's conjunct the north node. Mercury does not go conjunct the north node. Mercury doesn't go direct exactly conjunct the north node often. Um, I don't remember the last time it did. So it's not, it doesn't, definitely is not common. Um, So, you know, again, this is that you know, you've, you've considered what's, what, what do I need to surround myself with? How do I align myself, my goals, my resources, my home and family environment, siblings, how do I consider that partnership? How do I consider myself and my career and my public image? And now it's that forward movement around, okay, I know what is pleasurable to me. I know what is fun to me and more forward movement around your creativity and your self-expression. So you might quite literally feel more of a natural flow around like artistic pursuits or creativity, um, you know, at the end of April onward. But Mercury also rules that eighth house. So forward movement around partners resources, if applicable, forward movement around transformation you want to take. Um, so I really, I really like this for you especially towards the end of the month where it's sort of like you sort things out, you get really clear on very tangible like environmental things that are going to support you and your goals and who you want to surround yourself with. And that forward movement in your communication, being able to communicate your creativity, communicate your self-expression communicate your transformation, communicate with your partner around resources. And then on April 30th, at this point, we, you know, Mars will have entered its home sign of Aries and Venus will have entered its home, its home sign of Taurus. So we've gone through the month, you know, going, there's a lot that has happened and um, how we take action and how we pursue what we love and value might have felt different, unfamiliar with where these planets were. And now we're ending the month not only with forward movement, but we are now getting Mars, how we take action and its home sign, and Venus, you know, what we love and value and attract in its home sign. And so we get the just this direct movement, but we also get more familiarity with 
our next steps, our actions, and ultimately what we love and value and what we can attract. Hello, Pisces Risings. Now on April 1st, Mercury is going to go retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. So this really starts this revisionary period in your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So some of you could be quite literally reviewing, you know, your resources, your earned income, um, your budget, but more specifically, Mercury rules your fourth house of home, family, property, real estate, and your seventh house of marriage, long-term partnership, and business partnerships. So this could be a couple different things, but I would definitely pay attention to the partnership area, its influence on your earned income, especially business partnerships, and any home, family, property, or real estate dealings you have that affect your resources, material possessions, um, and income, obviously. Now, at the same time, on April 1st, as Mercury goes retrograde, Venus and Neptune are going to go conjunct in your first house of self, body, appearance, identity. So while this revisionary period is taking place, you're also going to feel pulled towards maybe focusing on yourself, your body, your appearance. Um, almost as like Venus, Neptune, it's almost like as a form of escape for you at this time. Um, especially with Saturn going through the four the first, you know, trying to be a bit more disciplined um, around you, your body, your appearance. And I think the there's a semi-sextile situation going on, this minor aspect between this Mercury retrograde and this Venus-Neptune situation going on, which the analogy I give is like two roommates who comfortably coexist, but they literally have nothing in common, no friends in common, no life in common. And so... Going into April, um, you could feel very much compelled to want to focus on yourself, your body, your appearance, your identity, how you show up in the world. But there's going to be this other situation pulling you in an entirely different direction and involving your resources, home, family, property, real estate, and marriage, partnership, business partnership, if applicable. Again, let it play out. It will pass. Now, April 5th, Venus is going to enter your Aries second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. Venus rules your eighth house of sex, death, transformation, assets, investments, your partner's uh, resources if applicable. And it also rules your third house of communication, siblings, extended family. So Venus going into Aries how you operate in terms of your resources and your self-worth is going to be a little different for some of you. Venus in Aries operates a little differently. Venus is going to feel more compelled to go after what Venus wants. And, um, you know, with Venus ruling the third and the eighth, you might really want to use whatever resources, material possessions, or really just step into your self-worth to communicate your needs, to communicate or change your immediate environment um, to support you and to, to support your resources. Um, another, another potential in terms of a general horoscope reading, I would say, you know, with Venus in, in your second house of earned income, but ruling sort of other people's resources or your partner's resources, um, you know, it could be a time where you, you're really looking to other resources or a partner's resources to, you know, focus on some material possession or focus on your self-worth, focus on taking care of, you know, your needs, your self-care. Or just creating um, a, a more immediate environment that is supportive to you. Now, again, look at your personal chart. Look at your personal placements. It's going to heavily influence this. A additionally, on April 5th, that North Node is going to go conjunct the Sun in your Aries second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. So this is really going to add more increase into 
you know, self-care, self-worth, material possessions, earned income. And the sun is exalted here. And so, you know, this is heavily pulling you in this direction, but the sun rules your sixth house of health, wellness, routine, daily work, pets, coworkers. So I think you're going to be really utilizing resources or trying to increase your earned income, increase your resources, material possessions, self-worth, self-care in a way where, you know, you're also integrating your health, your wellness, your routines in order to do that. And then on April 8th, there is a new moon solar eclipse in this airy second house. Again, heavy second house situation playing out in April. So new moon solar eclipse, new beginning, initiating, really strong initiation, new start, beginning um, in the second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. This is at 19 degrees, so if you know your personal placements and you have um, anything around 19 degrees of any cardinal sign in particular, so Aries, Capricorn, Libra, and Cancer, um, this you'll, you'll likely see it show up more more effectively more strongly in your life and so this is really what what needs to change what needs to be initiated what needs to start around your resources your material possessions um your self-worth in this new chapter again on april 10th i've talked about this in previous horoscopes mars saturn conjunction in your pisces first what as this is playing out this is being initiated change to create more strength and stability in these areas of your life you have this mars saturn conjunction in your first what part of you really wants to go in terms of your body your appearance your identity how you show up in the world and then what part of you feels like you still want to pump the brakes a little bit you still want to maybe um, restructure or reorganize things to support yourself your body your appearance your identity So again, that Mars-Saturn conjunction, I have a lot of different theories on it. I've read a lot of ancient literature on it. Um, Mars-Saturn conjunction, if you look it up, you'll only see negative things. I don't think that this is going to be the case. I think when you really break it down, you look at the elemental makeup of each planet, it being in Pisces, there is um, a good amount of mitigating factors that aren't going to, to make it play out as it normally would which in this case is a good thing um and i've even read some ancient literature that suggests this actually being a positive thing um so we'll see how that plays out but i would say for now consider your resources your material possessions your self-worth your self-care what parts are ready to go and what parts are not quite there yet in terms of your body, your appearance, your identity, and how you want to show up in the world. On April 11th, that Mercury is still retrograde, but that Mercury is going to go Kazemi. It's going to go in the heart of the sun for a few hours. On April 11th, again, in your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. This is that few hour moment where you kind of gain more clarity particularly around a home, family, property, real estate situation, and something playing out within your marriage, your partnership, or a business partnership. So this is a point where you're still reviewing and revising, but you sort of go, oh, I see what's going on, or oh, I see what's going to play out. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. So, you know, April 11th in particular looks like things start to shift and turn after some review, some revise, you kind of, you gain your bearings a little bit. Then on April 17th, Jupiter, Uranus conjunction in Taurus. Now this is actually exact on April 20th, but I like to give my clients the lead up because most people feel it in the lead up. And Really, this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening in your third house of immediate environment, siblings, extended family. Um, And, you know, when we break this down, okay, Jupiter is expansion, good fortune, abundance. Uranus is sudden, the awakener, 
the innovator. And so there's a lot of, it looks like there's a lot of expansion going on in your immediate environment. Maybe something going on with siblings or extended family that's playing out. But for you personally, Jupiter is your ruling planet. You are a Pisces rising. So Jupiter rules over yourself, your body, your appearance, your identity. And it also rules over your 10th house of business, career, public image. So you could see, you know, especially if you're um, a public kind of person or have a public business sort of situation, you could quite literally, I mean, it's like a literal translation, see yourself in a more public light suddenly. Um, you could see more expansion or publicity with siblings or extended family or, you know, with Jupiter ruling yourself, it's like you, you could just be more out in your environment, your neighborhood, your community. And Jupiter is benefic. It's, it's benefic. It's abundant. It's expansion. So I personally, I'm looking forward to this conjunction for um, all of us. But for you, I would particularly, particularly pay attention to like your immediate environment, um, your siblings, your extended family, what's going on with them, how is your business, your career, your public image being suddenly expanded or suddenly, you know, out and about. And more importantly, what's going on with your body, your appearance, your identity that could suddenly shift or change or expand in an abundant way. And additionally, on April 17th, with this conjunction, we have Venus conjunct the North Node. So Venus will be on top of the North Node in your second house of earned income, material possessions, and self-worth. Again, Venus rules over that third house where that Jupiter-Uranus conjunction is happening around your neighborhood, your community, your siblings, your extended family. And it also rules over your eighth house of sex death transformation investments, assets, your other people's resources, your partner's resources, if applicable. So again, there's a lot going on mid to late April for a lot of you regarding your immediate environment, your communication, your siblings, your extended family, but also you, you know, your career, your business, your public image. Um, and with the Venus rulership, it's sort of like you're, you're heavily weighing your resources versus other people's resources and maybe how that plays out in your community, in home, family, property, real estate, how that plays out maybe with siblings or extended family, how that affects you and your body and your appearance, and most importantly, obviously, your business and your career. Now, on April 25th, we finally have Mercury conjunct the North Node and finally going direct exactly conjunct the north node. So this is pretty significant. This really this isn't this isn't common. Um, again, Mercury rules at fourth house of home and family, property, real estate, and also your seventh house of marriage, partnerships, and business partnerships. This is where things have the green light. This is where things start to move forward. You start to feel that like, okay, I know what's going on. I know the plan. I've reviewed and revised it. And for you, it's in the area of your resources, your material possessions, your self-worth type stuff. So, you know, what forward movement are you seeing around your resources and material possessions in regard to your partnerships, in regard to home, family, property, real estate? So... I particularly like this forward movement for you, especially because it is involving a few angular houses and I think you'll be able to, I think you're, you're weighing resources and, you know, income coming in versus what's being invested or your partner's money. Um, you're, it seems like a lot of Pisces rising, you're going to be focusing on your body, your appearance, your identity and you know, your business, your public image, um, your immediate environment, your community, you know, your community, your neighborhood is seeming to suddenly expand and for a lot of you become more abundant. And like I said, Jupiter is your ruling planet. So you will likely feel this on a personal level compared to other people. And what's really great is on April 30th, well, by April 30th, I should say. So by the end of the month, 
we will have Mars entering its home sign of Aries, your second house of earned income, material possessions, and Venus entering its home sign of Taurus. So your communication, your siblings, your extended family, your immediate environment. Now, this to me is significant because we've gone through eclipses and really significant conjunctions and um, shifts and changes. And with these cardinal eclipses, like I mentioned in the intro, you'll, there's going to be change and initiation, but with these eclipses, there's, there's positive things going on. There's resources, there's opportunities. And it's, it's a good thing considering the past couple of years, what the, you know, eclipses haven't always been the greatest, but I think with these eclipses, there's, there's a lot of, um, opportunity and initiation and change. However, how we're taking that change, how we're taking that action, and how we're figuring out what we love and value, we're doing it, but it might feel unfamiliar to some of us on how we're doing it. So again, cardinal signs love to start things. And, you know, with change and initiation, there is a level of, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar, I got to learn how to re-equilibrate myself here and what's beautiful is not only do we get this direct forward movement especially for you in the area of resources material possessions and self-worth communication immediate environment siblings extended family there is also what seems like this more familiar understanding or energy around how to take action around your resources and how to communicate what you love and value regarding your environment, your siblings, and extended family. 